Hey everybody, Ken Plume here. Welcome to another edition of Force 5. This is the show where I have a very special guest on and we talk about their five favorite Star Wars action figures or collectibles. Uh, uh, any size, any era, doesn't matter. It's all about the conversation. And right now I'm really looking forward to the conversation that I'm going to have with a... Uh, a toy restorer, rejuvenator, uh, someone who brings brings old life to new life, to old life, to toys. to no You know what? It's very complicated, but it is one of the most engrossing channels that I have found on YouTube. It's so engrossing that while it is a visual medium, I will have it playing in the background just to listen to the description of what he's doing, which is not even helpful in any way when it comes to actually seeing what he's doing to be able to replicate the uh, the amazing toy restorations that Toy Poloi does. Toy Poloi, th Dave, it's good to finally meet you. Nice to meet you as well, Ken. Thanks for inviting me on. It's uh, it, a pleasure to be here. <laughs> and And no lie, your channel was a delightful find. At a very dark period, as anyone who has ever bought a vintage toy or found a vintage toy and realized it is broken <laughs> and then gone, but well, you... this is fine, I guess. You know, at least I have this thing, but it would be really swell if this mechanism worked again, because that would be fun. And then to do a search on YouTube and find the results come back and to find that you've tackled it and you you, 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 helped, you helped make a dream come true. <laughs> that's good that's good to know Do you know i'm one of the few people who is actively disappointed if i buy something and it's not broken and a lot of people always think that's a bit weird but if it's not broken what am i going to do with it it's just going to go on a shelf so i i'm the the one odd i guess the one oddity in this collecting world who likes a broken toy so you want you want your hobby to have a hobby yeah i i'm i've always liked I don't, I've never liked buying a toy and just putting it on the shelf. It seems a bit of a, just a bit boring. Like nothing, nothing has happened to it. I've not done anything with it. And I'm, I like to play with toys. And so I think by having something broken, I'm sort of playing with it. And, and that gives me joy. So most of the things on my shelves have at one point been broken. And, and I like that. And there's something, something modern about the mentality of preserving something in a certain state to affect its future resale value or what it is worth. That wasn't the case, you know, when we were kids, <laughs> it was no. basically, you got a thing, it existed to play with. And if you kept it, you kept it as a memento of growing up as damaged as, you know, whatever happened was the damage that happened through your play and, and held that memory it wasn't sort of buying a thing and going, well, if you if you retouch it, you repaint it, it ruins the value because you've somehow affected the vintageness yeah. of it. So I like the the wild abandon with with which you you go in and go, you know what? Why can't it look nice again? Why can't it can can it be restored to this? That's that's one of those sort of du double edged swords or whatever you want to call it, because some people admire what I do and then there is a certain part of the collecting world who absolutely hates what I do and I'm going to say predominantly that is Star Wars collectors they they either love what I do or hate what I do because there's always some uh, fear that I'm yeah reducing the value in something or trying to con someone in some way but, but it's only value it, is in your collection exactly and if it's broken by fixing it, I must be adding some value. And I'm still playing with toys. That's all I class what I do as. I play with toys. And they're my toys. I can play with them how I like. And how I like to play with them is to fix them up and modify them a bit and just generally tinker with them. That's my way of playing with them. My collection, my rules. Yeah, it's, when you mentioned in the past that people have taken issue with what you do, I've never understood why they don't just go, well, those are his toys. He can do what he wants. And he's providing helpful hints for anyone who might want to do what he does as well and you're not trying to fool anybody no but not... I, think that, that, I think that's that's always the main argument is that by me teaching someone else how to fix something they someone else may fix it and sell it on as something that's not been fixed or pretend it's never been fixed and so you're you're conning someone else or i'm you know i'm helping someone con someone else in future I think that's the main argument, but I think you've got to be quite a cynical person to think that that's how everybody 
de deals with the world. There right. are many people out there who have got broken toys who just want to fix them. And that's what I'm trying to do is show people how to fix toys. So, And frankly, if people are that concerned about it, they can look at your videos and go, well, here are the things we should look for to see if they've mm -hmm. been repaired in this fashion. Or this is a common breakpoint yeah. that exists in this X-Wing. Yeah. So let's see if this is something that, because it's operational now, do, do we see where someone has glued something on here yeah. to brace it up? It, it, it was funny. I was looking at, there's one particular uh, group. I won't mention names here because, you know, I don't like to sort of uh, bad mouth people, but there's one particular group that was always uh, hated what I do. But I was I was on their, their page a few days ago and I found people referencing my videos on there. So <laughs> it, is, it, it was just, it's that sort of, do they like me or do they not like me? I don't think they can make up their mind. It's quite interesting when when I see myself referenced, even though most of the time they they hate what I do. But so I think it's quite flattering in a way that I'm. I'm yeah, but everyone has feels a certain it. way. And so maybe the one time they're at like a swap meet and they find a broken X ring and go, "Well, how do you repair this?" Yeah, yeah. It's like it's there are some things that you always find broken. Like I'm finding more and more these days. Jabba the Hutt is always losing his arms. That's the you know that is how I found your channel. Yeah, but he is always losing his arms, and so, so I think there's Jabba. There's, yeah, lovely old Jabba. Did and, you fix it with Lego? Uh, so uh, I have not yet, because <laughs> well here so here's the irony of finding your channel is I knew when I got this the arm fell off. And it had that that brittle peg issue that you outlined that it just gave out. Uh, and at the time, I stuck it back on and just wedged it with the idea, I'm not going to move it until I find a way to fix it, because it's a display piece at that point. Uh, and then eventually it was one of those late night things where you're going, can you fix it, Jabba? <laughs> and I found your channel, and I looked at the thing, and then I went, you know, I, I went to eBay, I ordered the lego pieces so i have a little pack of those lego bits yeah uh and then i pulled the java out and his arm rotated you're lucky and you're it's lucky. not and it's not falling off so i'm like i have the replacement ability now and i know i can do it but if by some miracle it's staying on there it's like i'm not actively like but he's not he, he's not you know in a royal procession right now having to wave all the time He's but that's thing now, now you know if it does break it's not an issue you know that there is a way to fix it and i, I think that's what my video is really there for because there are so many common things that break on toys so i try and cover the most common stuff because if it's broken for me it will have broken for someone else and yeah that is quite disheartening if you're a collector it's like, oh no this thing's broken so i want to help those people that they suddenly don't feel so bad I mean, it's broken but here. i have a, i have an answer I just looked over here and here's my uh uh I haven't tackled this yet because this is my oh. childhood yep. Indiana Jones. So I kind of like the idea that he has that broken thumb because it, it you know it, it feels but if I ever found another one. Yeah. And that was a thing that I looked up and went, I wonder if he's ever fixed a thumb. Because <laughs> oh, yeah, this seems them. to be a common issue. In fact, I have a bag here of Indiana Jones figures that I've been working on repairing the thumbs on because I've been making some little <laughs> customs. And I think every single one of these has had a thumb missing. So I like that that had to be them. part of the promotional videos for the retro re-releases of these figures. It's like, we solved the thumb issue. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. It's not going to happen again. Uh, but for it to be so consistent on those Indiana Jones. Uh, yeah, I think you, you're you're lucky to find some of those figures without the, you know, with an unbroken thumb. I, th there's just something about them. But, you know, that's just part of their history. They, I like that in the inner toy. It's the story of it. There's there's a fault or something when they designed it. And that's yeah. what they I mean, like. He still has a spring action. So I'm happy with that. It's a great figure. I'm looking. I'm really looking forward to getting the uh, the uh, retro version. I've, I've ordered three of them, so hopefully they'll turn up. At some I don't point. know if you've seen uh, uh, Steve Evans from uh, Hasbro, who's been on. Uh, if anyone wants to go watch the episode, been on Force Five as a guest. But they scanned his Indiana Jones figures for the right. retro releases, and uh, he sh was showing off the differences because he just got his samples in uh, for the retro re-releases, and he was very gingerly holding his vintage indie that was holding the whip in right. that hand and it's like i'm not going to take the whip out i'm never going to take this whip i'm not even going to risk it having a completely mint unblemished unbroken indiana jones 
but the second time I went to your channel, I did do the repair. And the repaired version is actually hanging behind me. It's an X-Wing. Oh, right, right. That what, was, I what, fixed. what was broken on your X-Wing? The wings. The wings. Yeah. So, uh, and then I went later and bought another X-Wing. Right. And I believe this one also has the exact same, yep, break. Yeah. They look they look sort of floppy. So yeah, that's gonna be the same issue. Yeah, that's that was an old fix. I might I might be inclined to fix it slightly different these days. So that might be a topic I should recover. Well, is um, this something before you had plastic weld? Because I know you use plastic yeah. weld quite a bit now. Yeah, I would say it's that was before I'd found the magic of plastic weld. Like I there are videos that I class as before Lego, and there are videos <laughs> I class as before plastic weld. Um because yeah, I think I would probably fix it differently because you can buy thin, very thin sheets of styrene, like half millimeter thick styrene. And I think that would probably do a better job. Um, the, the, having said that, the X-Wing I fixed with that uh, using uh, super glue and sort of thin sheets is still perfectly fine. It's still on my display and still works. So it's a good fix, but I think I would probably tackle it differently. But then that's, that's the fun. I've been running this channel for nine years. You learn stuff as you go. So some of the early fixes, I look back at it and think, oh, well, you know, it's interesting and it, is, it works. But now I would tackle it differently because I have different skills and a different sort of well, knowledge base to, to work what's, on. What's the most fundamental thing that you wouldn't do now that you look back on? Or I think things like that, just sort of using using super glue regularly. Super glue is fine. It does work. But I think now I found plastic weld. There are many, many things that you can fix with that. It doesn't work with every plastic. It's very sort of specific type of plastic a styrene based plastic that it works with but when it works it works perfectly um so that's probably the main difference and also lego like i didn't use lego for about the first four years of doing toy polloi but it's such a useful uh, <laughs> resource of pieces it's there are so many different bits of lego and so many shapes and it's so easy to work with and it's so easy to get um so that i would i use all the time now and it's also very easy if i say to someone you know if someone says to me this is broken i can say well you need to find this lego piece and everybody can find that lego piece rather than me saying well i use this a bit of plastic that i cut off this and did that you know that's not easy to find but if i can say it's this exact lego piece you need everyone can do it and if it's for things like pegs and that you don't have to worry about the color of the lego piece no nope, it's nope. just the the type yeah it's it, and it's it's so universally useful um if i if i get a new toy in that i've never fixed before the first thing i'll do is look at it and go is there something in lego that's quite similar <laughs> to to what is broken on this and i will there's a, a few websites uh, that list every single lego piece that's available and i just scour through that to see is there something useful in fact my my lego toolbox now if i just reach down here this is my lego toolbox it's just absolutely <laughs> full of of pieces uh, of a subscriber of mine sent me this new box and filled it with all these wonderful, useful pieces. So I've got even more bits to look at now. If I find a broken thing, it's like, oh right, my Lego box comes out, and I might just, find, <laughs> I might just find that key piece. Is there anything that you fixed in the past that you've gone back and refixed as you've learned new things? Yeah, definitely. I, I did, um, I did some work on the Kenner Centurions figures. Uh, oh maybe five or six years ago and i fixed it using a screw like a sort of fat headed screw um and it the fix worked and it worked really well and it's still you know uh, but then again yeah lego came along there's a better piece of lego which is easier to deal with and easier to to sort of fix it with so i actually did a sort of a revisited video where i i did a new fix say this is what i did last time but this is better so <laughs> i yeah I, there's always sort of things i learn that, that i will go back to like the tie fighter wings uh you know the, the way the clips break on those and the wings always fall off i did a video using lego to fix that um but actually i think if i did it now i'd probably do it a different way i'd probably make a clip out of styrene because it's you can make something quite simple and it would be strong enough so i would probably do that fix differently although lego works perfectly well and again all of the tie fighters that i have on my wall you can't see them here but there's a few tie fighters up here um they're all fixed using Lego and they're still up there and the wings are still on. They still fire off perfectly well. So it's a good fix, but I would just go a different route now. I'm looking forward to your X-Wing revisit. 
to see yes, I've, I've got, if Plastic I've, Weld works before I tackle this one. I've got a box of broken X-Wing, so I will, I will dig one out and I'll add it to my list of projects to revisit over the next year. It's um, Yeah, I'm it sure is, it would work. Is there anything that's been unfixable over the years? Or is there, is there a too far gone? I don't think there's a too far too far gone there's things that have taken me a long time to work out fixes for uh, and i've mentioned this before and, and someone else asked me uh my friend jeremy who runs the youtube channel tokyo toy bastard he gave me some um real ghostbusters figures and he gave them to me because he wanted me to fix the proton packs and they sat in my to-do pile for five years because <laughs> i kept looking at them thinking oh, i'm sure i can fix this i'm sure I can fix but i just couldn't work it out so after but after five years, I suddenly went, oh yeah, I know what to do. It just suddenly sort of came to me, and and I fixed them. So that was a, a long one. But then, uh, like the broken X wings, no broken Tie Fighters, they've been on my shelf. Well, they've been on my on my display for sort of twenty years, and I then for suddenly thought, oh, I, I might as well fix it because I know what I'm doing. <laughs> and I've got like a, I did a video recently on the uh, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons Fortress of Fangs. I've had that playset in my collection for. 25 years and it's never been complete it's always had bits <laughs> missing to, it just sort of sat there and i finally thought i should just fix this because i know I'm, i know i can i can make the pieces that are missing i can make something that will work so i don't think there's anything that's unfixable it's just sometimes it takes me a while to hit upon come, yeah come up with an idea that i know is going to work so yeah i've yet to i've yet not to fix anything but there's things i'm sort of putting off fixing i suppose because i haven't <laughs> i haven't come up with the answer what what was the most satisfying Eureka moment you've had? Uh, I'll, well, I will come on to that in one of my oh, great. Uh, in one of my things. I'm not going to mention it because that uh, that is that is a key point in my in my my Star Wars figure collecting. Is well, let's one of ang the things. well let's angle towards that. So let's talk a little bit about your collecting history because uh, we're we're of a similar generation. Uh, I'm assuming. Uh, I would have thought so. If, judging by your collection behind you and what yeah. is behind me, <laughs> let's say yes. So, but, you know, obviously there's a slight difference in collecting in the UK and collecting in the US. So do you remember what the first toy line was that, that really hit you with something like, I want to collect these? I, I look at, I, I had Star Wars figures. I, I remember having Star Wars figures quite early on, but I don't, think i particularly collected them they were sort of there um i'm going to say things like smurfs we had a lot of smurfs and that was just generally because my mum and dad would take us on camping holidays around the uk and uh you would be able to buy smurfs at petrol stations or gas stations as you call them in the states um so me and my brother would sort of save up our pocket money and buy smurfs whenever we went to these sort of petrol stations we would buy a smurf so I remember getting lots of those, and I must have been quite young to get those. And they were an easy entry point as far yeah, as price-wise to get. They're cheap. They're quite attractive little things. And so, yeah, we had lots of those. And then, like, for I, I was big into Transformers, but that was sort of a bit later. I must have been, well, Transformers came out, what, 84, something like that? So I yeah. about, about, was about 10 when those came out. I was into those action man i had loads of action man figures you call them gi joe the big 12 inch ones uh action man i had absolutely loads of uh those not all original some were you know i my mum dad bought me a couple but loads came from jumble sales and car and sort of car boots they were second hand so i really enjoyed those um and then i just had lots of odd toys that's you know <laughs> things like, you know, people would buy you an odd toy or my mum would go to a jumble sale and come back with an odd toy. Uh, that I had no other ones for it. I remember getting a, a Mego Batman. Like, just I just had Mego Batman. I had no other Mego figures, just Batman. <laughs> because my mum brought it home from a... Long past when Mego would have yeah. been released. Yeah, it just it just turned up. It's like, oh, my mum found it, thought it was interesting, knew I liked Batman to watch on the TV. So there was a Batman. It didn't have the belt or the cape. So I think I made a cape for it uh, out of some felt. So I, I just had Batman. I didn't have any other <laughs> figures. <laughs> um, so, yeah, like I, I, it was only I sort of got into collecting, I guess, sort of 10 11 12 something like that but even then i didn't manage to get much stuff because i didn't have much pocket money so my collection were minimal you know it would be <laughs> i had four or five transformers and you know 10 or 15 star wars figures 
there were loads I wanted, but I didn't have, you know, I just couldn't afford them. Were you very keen on keeping things though? Were you actively like, oh, this is my, my collection. I'm going to keep it. It's not going to be, you're not going to sell them off. Ah, no, that's, that's the thing. When I was sort of 14 ish, 14, 15, uh, I got into remote control cars and computers. And so sold pretty much everything I kept, um, I think like four or five Star Wars figures. I, I did clip all my Transformers and I kept a few uh, Dungeons and Dragons figures, but everything else went. And then when I reached, when I was sort of 20 ish, when I got my first job and uh, suddenly thought, ah, I wish I hadn't got rid of all of that stuff. That's, <laughs> that's the downhill part of it. And when all of this happened, because I bought back all the things that I'd had. And then I bought back all the things that I wanted. And then, <laughs> then I bought back all the things that I remember seeing. And then, and then you found you know, whole new things. Exactly. And I found things I'd never heard of. And so I bought all of those. <laughs> so, yeah, I wish I could. There are there things that I still haven't managed to get that I had as a child. Yeah. What do you want back still? Yeah. There's, there's, um, there's a couple of Dungeons and Dragons figures that I had. There's a there's a green version of Ogre King. It's a sort of second release one. I had it. I've got a photo of me with this thing. <laughs> and I, I've got the figure now, but I cannot get the accessories. It's one of those figures. It's so ridiculously expensive with accessories. So, but I have a photo of me with it as a child. It's like, why did I get rid of that one? And you, you know, know the should've... potential. There's somebody out there that may have your childhood figure. Oh, I'm sure. Yes. Hope, I hope someone is. I has, hope someone has it. And I hope someone's enjoying it. And because that would be amazing. I don't, I, I dread to think of things getting chucked away. I just, I would love someone to have that, uh, you know, in their collection. Imagine if someone has your childhood Mego Batman <laughs> yes, and, is, yes. and is looking on your channel going, I'd really like to replace this cape. Yeah. Is there a better way to replace this cape? Yeah. In this belt? Better than a big bit of blue felt because that's all it would have been i wouldn't i wouldn't have made anything that exciting it would just have been a triangle of blue felt with a bit of elastic or something i probably got my mum to help me sew on you know it'd been, it would have been very basic have you gotten amigo batman again since I, I do he's sitting behind me there i've got i've got batman i have robin as well now because i i thought i can't have one without the other now did those come did you get those uh uh in great form or did you have to do some restoration on those oh those would have been yeah those are ones i think i featured them on my channel uh, someone sent me uh, uh i think someone sent me both of them in sort of a very sorry state so, those, so modern been... you if you're looking at those and you need yeah. to replace the belt and the cape how yeah. would you do it today I think the cape I made from scratch, I think that's made out of uh, some sort of nylon fabric. So I, I, I found some photos. Or I think I asked someone to scan in or take a photo of an original cape. And from that, I made a pattern and um, so made my own cape. I think the belt, the belt and the boots, I think, are reproduction ones because there's that um, Dr. Migo website where they make quite a lot of reproductions for, for those figures. So because a lot of that stuff was super brittle yeah, vinyl the... and, and plastic. Especially the gloves. The gloves are really weird. They're like sort of oven mitt uh, gloves made out of heaps, sort of uh, welded. It felt vinyl. like the cheapest plastic. Yeah. So a lot of that stuff. I'm glad they make reproductions of things like that because you, you, yeah. I've got I've got a few figures with, which are in a sorry state because their boots are split. But you can just get reproductions now. And I mean, we should talk about. You know, people should definitely go check out your website because mm. you have provided uh, very nicely for free a lot of material for people as far as patterns for doing capes and cloaks and such. Uh, and the, the Zen of watching you do sticker <laughs> recreations and restorations uh, is also another beautiful part of your channel. Yeah. A lot of people seem to enjoy that. I, I, I get, I, I started up a second channel specifically to do things that aren't quite as popular as they, as they would seem on, on toy Bloy. So I have a, a second channel called toy Bloy two. And I did, I put up the, sort of photoshop work of me making stickers unedited so it's like really long videos <laughs> of just me using but people seem to love just watching me sort of tinker about in photoshop sometimes i put a bit of a voiceover on but a lot of the time it's just literally me you know drawing stuff and doing things i think people are sort of fascinated about the process of it. it's very hard to explain i've been doing art a very long time my, my sort of work life is is art based so i know how to use the package very well and i can just sit and draw stuff so but it's it's rewarding because if you've got a toy without stickers <laughs> it looks a bit <laughs> rubbish you've got to have the stickers on it but it's something about that era of stickers like that's sort of the the early 80s in particular when fantasy 
and the He-Man stickers are just bonkers when it yeah. comes to design. I mean, I don't know what they were thinking. Uh, I like on... I like them. I like the fact they've all got dragons on them or sort of weird shapes yeah. and weird emblems. Just yeah, just weird slime and mm. organic shapes and it's it's I'm assuming it's a different sort of zen to do a Star Wars sticker or a, a Masters of the Universe sticker. Yes, Star Wars stickers are the Kenner style of Star Wars stickers is very sort of red button, yellow button, grey box. Uh, they're all they're fairly straight. The geometric. And they're very quick to do generally, the Star Wars stuff. You can I can churn those out. The yeah, the He-Man ones are a lot more complicated. In fact, I did a custom version of the um battle ram with a sky sled on it. Uh, and I wanted to redraw there's a there's a sort of dragon on the front of the sky sled. Uh, and I wanted to do a different version, sort of a skeletal themed version. And I drew that by hand. And that's actually quite a hard thing to copy because there's the way they're drawn the style of them they're very iconic but they're also sort of naive as well they don't really look they're a bit sort of basic but also quite complicated so copying someone else's basic style is quite hard to do but it's i enjoy that sort of process you imagine it's something someone may paint on the side of their van yeah <laughs> but it's sort of like it's not even that it's not even that good you know because you see some bands and stuff with, like with really lovely airbrushed fantasy art on them they've taken hours to do these things are so naive in their sort of form and shape and they've got i don't know they're, they're, they're they fit the toys perfectly they, right they were someone was having match. fun like you look at it like the, you would think if you look at the, a grate yeah some some company might just do a geometric grate mm. but if it's a grate in a castle for the master of the universe line you're going to have tentacles that are painted yeah. on there you're going to have slime that's oozing around it but the thing with old stickers as well, especially that sort of Masters of the Universe stuff, is you know, now if I draw a sticker for one side of a vehicle, I can flip it and I've got it for the other side. Then they draw it and then they'd have to draw it again in reverse. So <laughs> they're always slightly different. You've got one side looks one way and the other one's just a bit off and a bit wonky. And I like that. The fact there's nothing, nothing is perfect because of the way they had to be drawn. They were hand drawn and hand put together. There's no computers that can do things perfectly and it's yeah I, I love those sorts of things and i love those sort of details and stuff that they're just a bit off but well, the office makes them brilliant but i like that you know it as a, a service a, a wonderful service to the community that you you recreate these things clean so it looks great because if you get uh you know that your vintage stickers that are still sticking on there they're probably weathered they're probably peeling there's obviously printing has changed as far as the quality of print, if you try to scan something in, that's going to look dicey. Uh, so to have a nice, clean printout is a wonderful thing. Yeah, well, it's just, if I'm fixing the toys for myself, I've made these files. I just think, well, I might as well give them to everyone else to use because I don't, like, if especially if it's not something I've designed, I don't own it. I've just redrawn it. I don't, it's the, the original design is not mine. I've, I'm essentially copying someone else's artwork. So I just want to, I feel in that instance, it should be free for everyone to use. It's a free, you know, it's a free file, go for it. Um, and hopefully other people will fix their, you know, be able to fix their toys. In fact, I did, uh, I can't remember how many downloads it's had, but I did, I sort of sorted out the stickers for Castle Grayskull and they have been downloaded. I mean, it's like tens of thousands of times off my, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a massive number. That and the stickers for the Millennium Falcon are the two biggest downloads on the site. And it's, it is like tens of thousands of people have downloaded that file. So hopefully that means tens of thousands of Castle Grayskulls and Millennium Falcons now have stickers on them. Have you done stickers for Boba Fett's ship yet? I have. I've, I've, I think I may have only got custom versions on my site. I've, I have got another version. I've got the original one. Because that may be the next project that I tackle. Is, is Right. I did some custom stickers because I've done... I made a version where I've I've sort of done a panel inside it. So when you open up, if you open it up currently, it's got a very boring inside to it. So I made a. So you're saying if we open no, up if you, the if you canopy? If, no, if, oh, no, the inside. If you open up, take off that L-shaped panel. Well, now I feel very... I should delicately put that to the side because that's a fix you've done. <laughs> yeah. You're yeah, probably you take... looking at me gingerly or non-gingerly. Take that thing off going, why? why did you grab it like that? If you take the L-shaped panel off it, it's it's just really boring on the inside. So oh, I made a 
I made a panel that goes inside of that just to give it a bit more depth. Uh, and it makes such a massive difference. It's one of those things you see, as soon as you see that big empty wall, it's like that needs something on it. Now, is that something that, so if I didn't want to do that as a decal, yeah, could I take the general shape, print that out on like a piece of uh, uh, paper that it's, I could essentially just tag yeah, that's up there? How, that's how, if you watch the video I did, that's how it's done. I, I basically cut a piece of cardboard to the side and it's just held on with uh, double-sided sticky pads. So Okay, so it's not permanent. It's non-permanent stuff, yeah, yeah. I'm going to try and put this back together now. <laughs> It's amazing how finicky these things really were. <laughs> yeah, some of them you, you do feel they're they're sort of less toy and more an annoyance. And I think a lot of old toys were like that that they they fell apart as you played with them. But then yeah. modern toy modern toys are the same. Now look, I got it back on without breaking it. Nice. He says as he drops it as he tries to put it back behind him. Uh the uh so I think we should get to your first choice. So I think I, I uh, you had not ranked these previously, yeah, so you're going to be ranking these in the moment. I'm going to be ranking. Well, I'm, I'll start with the one that I alluded to a, a little while ago because it's a it's it's up there. It's a it was a turning point in my fixing life, but it's also a toy I loved as a child. I didn't have that many Star Wars figures, but I had. I think the most I had were from uh, Return of the Jedi. That's obviously like 1983 when I had a bit of pocket money. So a figure I really loved, and I actually, it was one of the figures I had two of, I was the Biker Scout. Uh, and it's it's just a figure I've always liked. I love the style of it. I love the look of it. I just think it's a sort of a perfect looking figure. But the reason this is in my list is actually because this was the first point I realized that Lego was an amazing tool for fixing vintage toys because uh, I got this one, and the head had broken off and someone had stuck it back on, I think, with a, uh, a match or like burnt a hole in it and stuck it on with a match. And I then thought, oh, what you need is Lego. And so this was the very first figure I fixed with Lego. And it was the, it was the sort of turning point in my toy sort of fixing abilities, because as soon as I thought Lego, I can use that for lots of things. And so this, this was that sort of that key moment. So it's a figure I loved from my childhood but it's a big sort of moment in toy ploys history, uh, the ability to fix with a Lego axle pin. And that's an extremely common piece of oh, Lego. Yeah, it's extremely common. And it's an extremely common problem with Star Wars figures. In fact, you know, you see so many Star Wars figures with their heads broken off. And it's just, a sh you know, I've seen people just glue them straight on or stick a nail in or a screw or something, which seems such an Ill inelegant way of doing it. Whereas Lego the head still turns it's clicked in place nicely and the great thing with it is if you've got a lot of figures like this you can start swapping the heads because they're all going to be held on <laughs> in the same way so if i if i lean over here and grab another figure i think this luke skywalker's head is probably broken it is because it's on that shelf so i can now make very quickly there's a Luke Skywalker wearing his <laughs> scout uh, trooper disguise. Scout trooper. And I just think that's a great thing that I can now sort of customize figures very quickly because all of the ones that are broken have the same, you know, neck now, and it's just easy to swap them out. So it was a sort of a big part of my toy fixing journey that I, that I learned that this is, a, you know, a, an important thing. Lego is just so useful <laughs> the versatility yeah it's it seems a silly thing but I, you know and i'm, I'm has of, lego ever failed you um a couple of times I've, I've not been able to find a piece that is the right size and that's sort of annoying but you know mostly there are bits that are that will do the job so yeah sometimes it's it's not the right thing you know styrene sheet and plastic weld work better but there's generally a lego piece that will fix most things and they're super strong. Yes. And they're very easy to get and they're very cheap. <laughs> Always a good thing when you don't want to invest a mm. ton, because then you might as well just buy a mint figure if that's what you're looking for. Yeah. I no, my collection is all the, the dregs of, of other people's collections, things that most people would uh you know just leave, go, oh no, that's that's too broken. So I don't like spending a lot of money on toys. I would rather buy cheap stuff. And so a cheap fix is ideal. 
I mean, you talked about the the real Ghostbusters sitting in a bin for mm. five years. Is there anything that's been or is still in a bin for that long? Or I can't show you, but there is a pile of things here uh, that is just things I'm looking at and pondering and going, oh, well, maybe that will that will work. But I I have so many things to fix because of the, you know doing the videos. Lots of people send me stuff now, so I've I've probably got about fifty years worth of, of projects. <laughs> That is and just, I see you've been teaching yourself like electronics as well. I've, I've, I grew up, my dad was an electronics engineer. So I sort of feel that I should know more. He taught me loads of stuff, but I just can't remember. Sadly, he passed away a couple of years ago. So I, I wish I, I wish I knew more. I know very basic stuff so I can get away with doing bits of wiring and, and uh, you know, getting lights working stuff, but I wish I knew more and I wish I'd sort of learned more from him but i was you know i just wasn't into it then and now i am it's such a shame but uh, that's that's how life works well i mean i noticed you've been doing the uh uh the upgrade kits on some of the vehicles with the leds which have looked incredible yeah adding adding lights to things is always a joy i did a a wire wing recently and a wire wings that's always been a toy it just looks amazing as a toy, you know, such a good uh, sculpt and it looks so much like the wire wings in Star Wars. And without much work, you know, putting a few lights in the engine, it just looks so much better. Well, I can't wait to see you tackle uh, an X-Wing because if there's <laughs> any cockpit that makes it virtually impossible to see that there's a figure inside. Yeah. Like particularly that Darth Vader's TIE fighter, which I have oh, yeah, behind the tie... me. Yeah. When you have a dark Darth Vader figure, inside is that dark cockpit you might yeah. as well not even have a figure in there that's okay i, I hadn't thought of that it's a good one to do i've got a few tie fighters in my loft in in various states of disrepair so i'm, I'm sure we could do something because it would e- be easy to do because the light on the front of it is quite ineffectual it doesn't really do a great deal and so. vader just had a red light in his right it was yeah. like an under light but yeah, yeah, because he looks. Fact, I, I have think, a Vader in here. Can you tell there's a Vader in here? Yeah, you can't see anything, can you? <laughs> no, it's um. I think, yeah, he had red lights around him or something just to make him look a bit more evil. So um, yeah, you can. can. Look, there is a Vader in there. Oh, there he is. <laughs> yeah, it'd be a good one to do actually. Yeah, I, I, I have a, I have a, a board on my wall where I write down, sort of potential ideas for projects. I will add that after we finish chatting and um. Because it did have a light feature, obviously, with the firing yeah. light on the front. Uh, but, yeah, that cockpit seems to just cry out for some kind of illumination. Yeah, it just there. makes an it just makes an awful noise and flashes a light. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> that like, wonderful oh, Kenner noise. It's 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 the, the sound of the 70s, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> well, every motor sounded like a grinding abomination coming towards you. Yeah, it's not it's not a pleasant thing. It's certainly I think uh, like parents of that era must have hated Star Wars toys. There's a there's a there's actually another toy that I have, which is even worse, which is the uh, Starbird by MB. That makes so much noise and it's not even it's it's so <laughs> loud. But it's the whole point of the toy is that uh, as you tilt it, then the, sort of the engine noise goes down and up and down and up. So every child who got it would just be walking around the house going mm, mm, and it. It is such an annoying. Toy. I remember the only parental defense of the time was, "No, we don't have any batteries exactly to replace." Exactly. Sorry, yeah. you just yeah. <laughs> I, I I can see why many parents said that, just like, "No, sorry, no," and we can't afford them either. They're too expensive. Yeah, once these are gone, <laughs> yeah, that's enjoy it. Enjoy that sound while you can. Yeah, and those lights, and yeah, you know yeah. what? Take it in the bathtub. Take yeah. it in the bathtub. It's exactly. fine. It'll it it nothing's going to happen it's good no no <laughs> so the biker scout was your number five what would be your number four well I, I said i've got six here so i do have an honorary mention but i'm going to say i think i'm going to go larger this time it's still it's still imperial related but it is the 12 inch stormtrooper and this was one i never had as a child i don't think i even sort of realized it was around um and I, it was only sort of when I started collecting again that I, I sort of kept seeing them. And the reason I like this figure, it's easy to fix because there's not much that goes wrong. It gets loose limbs, nice and easy to fix. And you can customise it, as you can see here. This is one that I've turned into a sand trooper just by making a pauldron. 
But what I like about this is the older they get and the yellower they get and the dirtier they look, like this one's quite sort of stained and that, the better they look to me. They look like a proper stormtrooper. It's sort of weathered and beaten and like it's been on Tatooine for, you know, countless years. And, and I think a lot of people don't, a lot of people want their, their toys to be mint and sort of perfect. But actually, this one, it just looks better. The rougher it gets the, and the worse it gets, the more I like it and the more I pick them up. Every time I see one that's sort of really rough and really sort of damaged, you can get them for quite cheap, but they just look fantastic. So this is my sort of number four figure. It's because they have personality. Yeah, it doesn't need, you know, toys don't need to be perfect. I think a lot of people think toys need to be perfect to be enjoyed. Um, and this to me is one that I, the fact it's not perfect and the fact it's getting worse, they, they all look terrible. I like it even more. Every time I see one that's damaged, <laughs> I say, oh yeah, that's brilliant. I want that. I want another one in my collection. So that is my number four figure. Uh, you know, it's not one I remember having as a child. I don't think I ever saw this as a child. I don't think I ever saw any of the 12 inch figures as a child. It was all it was always the, the three and three quarter inch figures. So it was only when I sort of got back into collecting in my 20s that I, that, you know, I and knew. And how extensive the 12 inch were. Yeah, like, there's a there lot was of a, There's an IG 88. Yeah. That yeah. was out there. I've not, I've, I've not got a full set yet. In fact, I've got a, a Luke Skywalker and Han Solo down here that I don't have any clothes. I've never managed to find clothes for them. So they're just naked figures um <laughs> put but, them in some of the action man clothes that you have sitting around I, I, yeah a friend of mine made some boxer shorts for them so they, they aren't particular <laughs> they, they are sort of <laughs> decent um but they don't have any clothes because i've never found any at some point i probably should make some it's the sort of thing you could make but i like i like those as figures they're they're sort of they're not very good action men you know action men and gi joe are far more articulated in fact even like steve austin the six million dollar man is a much better figure than most of the Star Wars figures. Because they're just scaled up three yeah. and three quarter figures, right? Essentially. Yeah. They're it's so five POA. They're so naive. In fact, I have another one as my as uh, later down the list because it's because it's so rubbish. But I like it because it's so <laughs> rubbish. <laughs> I mean they made money. They made money any way yeah. they could, the fastest way they could. Yeah. I think like the one that everyone really likes is Boba Fett. Everybody seems to like the Boba Fett figure because that, that's probably the best one because it's the it's got the most articulation it looks like boba fett it's got the the not very nifty feature of making things smaller when you look through his little eye socket and a, and a rocket on the back but you know it's an iconic character everybody loves that figure and i think it's probably the best one of the lot of, of those 12 inch or 14 inch figures um but so i think it was just like we have a lot of the the steve austin tooling lying around let's yeah. use it for boba fett I think it's like a lot of toys. They've got it. They've made it. Let's just stick it in something else. You see that a lot with with certainly older toys. I think you know L the uh, going back to the Dungeons and Dragons figures. They had the battle matic action on the later line, which is just a button on the back that makes the arms move. They used that feature in Thundercats. I think the Dune figures have it. The um, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom figures use it. You know, it's just they had the feature. It worked. <laughs> Let's just bombard every toy line we have with this feature. And I think that's the same. If you've got one that works, stick it in everything. What's the hardest battle feature to repair? Because obviously, like the Kenner Superpowers line had a lot of those action features. Yeah. Like what's, it's, because it, a lot of figures, you know, I've noticed, you know, the, like the plastic welding of the bodies together obviously makes it difficult that's, to access that's internals. always a problem because it's it, if you can't get inside the figure easily then fixing it is a problem and i'd say that the one that breaks the most and i've i've yet to actually sort of work out a fix is the uh the waste mechanism on he-man figures masters of the universe figures it's got a spring inside it so when you twist the body they they flip you know they do a sort of punching action and the spring, if you get it wet, the spring rusts and it breaks and that action stops. And you can replace it, but to get into the figure, you have to split it apart and the plastic is not easy to split. So you end up causing more damage to the figure than, than it's worth. So, you know, you're better off leaving it with that feature broken. So that's one that I'm still pondering. And I have bags of broken He-Man figures that I keep sort of having a go at trying to split them and see if there's a better way to split it. <laughs> or, um, and I still, I have ideas that I can probably fix it 
without taking the figure apart. I've got a few ideas in mind, but I've yet to get it to work successfully. So that's a feature I would love to be able to fix and work out an easy way that I could say to people, this is how you do it. What's the easiest battle feature to fix on a figure? Easiest battle feature. I quite like the, the to be honest, the, the Ghostbusters figures are quite easy to split apart. If you get a chisel and a hammer, you can hit them and they just split. So <laughs> those are quite those are quite good. I've fixed a few of the Fright Features Janine figure. She has um like all Fright Features ones, you've raised the arms and part of her head will like, you know, her hair pops up and her mouth opens or her eyes pop out. Yeah, she does so, the scream, right? Yeah. So they're quite easy to fix just because you can get into them easily. You know, a quick hit with a hammer and they'll split open. Actually, uh, even on Masters of the Universe, Ram Man, um, he's the he's the you know the the figure that's got spring loaded legs so you, you sort of pop him down press a button and he jumps up a bit unlike all other he-man figures he's incredibly easy to fix because he's made out of a different plastic and you literally hit him with a hammer on the and side if I remember the ram man it's a pretty thin plastic isn't it it's no it's he's really sturdily made and i i hit them with hammers all the time and they split <laughs> nice and they, they split neatly down the middle and you can just you can just get him open it's like so you look it, at the other masters of the universe figures after they go why can't you be like that yeah he's the i don't think i've got one to hand oh I'm, actually i might do if i just lean over here yeah he's if you he's just I, you know, I did a video and basically if you just sort of put him on, rest him on a bit of wood and hit him here with a hammer, like, really whack him, it just splits apart. It's <laughs> And it's it's so unlike any other He-Man figure. You just think, but I guess that this guy is designed to be fired about, you know, because he's got spring-loaded legs, he was designed to be really played with. And maybe they thought, well, we make him out of a better plastic. But, you know, he's not the most sought after of figures, but I like him and I like fixing him. And every time I see one... <laughs> If I see one for cheap, I will buy him and fix him just because I like hitting them with a hammer and spitting them open. <laughs> and I'm kind of wondering how he'd look using the uh, that silver paint pen that you've been using. Oh yeah, he probably he'd probably look quite nice. I've seen a few people sort of customize them with with uh, a shiny Ram Man. Yeah, with diff different paint schemes. I think you because I don't think he particularly looks like he does in the the cartoons. I think people like to sort of customize him a bit and do that. But I try and keep all my most of my He Man figures are sort of looking original although that one has been uh sort of supercharged i put much bigger springs inside them so that they really fire along a long <laughs> way because <laughs> as a child it was always very disappointing that when you press the button he just basically stood up he just went like that so um <laughs> if, I, if I, he got any air exactly so th that one there actually can fire about 30 centimeters in the air he's <laughs> it's, it, it's quite an impressive thing so i put the biggest spring i can possibly get inside him just to just to sort of relive a childhood fantasy that i always wanted this so thing if to... it had been like that at the time it would have been part of a safety recall oh i think so i think i think he, it, no one would make a toy like that because you could easily brute like give yourself a black eye with it it's it's that vicious now <laughs> but that's what i as a child when i saw the advert i thought i was expecting that's what he was going to be like I didn't get one as a child. I only got one sort of, you know, again, when I was in my 20s. And I got him and he was so disappointing. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's <laughs> all he does. Well, I mean, you're talking about the difference between restoration and customization. Mm. So what characters or figures, because I know you have an extensive Skeletor collection <laughs> that's it, as yeah, well. Yeah. Is yeah. that is that a character that you are... Is it a comfort level with customizing or where where is the line for you when you decide, oh, I want to make this different than just the stock it, version? I guess it's it just sometimes I, I'll see a toy and just think that's not as good as it should be or it doesn't do what I wanted it to do or it doesn't look how I wanted it to be. So uh, it's like with Skeletor particularly, he, Skeletor ha should look a certain way. He, he should look like that toy from the 80s. Um, and they made some modern ones recently of the Origins series that they've been bringing out. And they just haven't got it right. It just, and as soon as I bought, you know, I bought them, it's like, that's just terrible. So as soon as I saw that, I knew I was going to customize it and make it look like it should, because it's a disappointment to me that they, they've gone to all this effort to make this toy line again. And yet they've done it. Or, or, or you know, the one figure I love, they've done it wrong, or they've done it not, you know, not as good as it should be. So soon, you know, that, I see it, I know I'm going to customize it. And I've been working a lot on um, Kenner's mask toys recently. I've, I've sort of got into those. 
and those some of them they went to town making nice stickers for them and they look really they've got a lot of stickers and other ones you can see it's sort of whoever's designed it has just sort of had the, gone oh i'm bored it's friday i'll just do the minute the minimum <laughs> i can to to make that look right and so it's just it doesn't look finished it doesn't look like it's got enough on there the toy is great but it needs more detailing and more stickers so you know a lot of those i've been seeing and just thinking right when i've got some time that's getting new stickers <laughs> so you know talk about the ma mask has been another one where it's been difficult to get into them right isn't that a uh to get to the internals some of them are yes uh, some of them are easy another i've just finished working on a, a, a vehicle called the bulldog which is particularly easy it's nicely screwed together you just unscrew it and then I, I was working on another one uh which is called the jackhammer and you unscrew it and you think oh that's all right and then you realize they've also sonic welded bits down the edges of it. it's like oh god okay why have you done that and then they've hidden a screw under another panel that you can't get to it's like They've just made it difficult. All the other ones are fine, but that one you get to, it's like, like why did you, why did you make this one so awkward? That's kind of like uh, what would the, is the ATST? Yeah, for Kenner, that also has that weird, just one post is. Yes, glued or... in fact, I have a video uh, coming up because I didn't show on. That's talking of like going back to projects. I did a the ATST was like one of my very first projects. And I didn't show something in that video because it was really awkward to do. In fact, uh, I have an ATSC here. It's one of my favorite toys because I never had it as a child. So I've got loads of them now. But I, in the in the very first restoration, I, I got one of those, took it apart. Because it's this up. one right here, isn't it? That post is the one that's... Yes, there's a post inside, but no, it's actually how to get the head off the body. I didn't show that in the in the first video because it's held in when you take the thing apart there's a there's a, a ring of clips that hold the the head in place and so to get it out you have to carefully deal with those clips you can't see it until you open it i mean it's it's and everybody i've had so many people message me over the years saying you didn't show how to you took the head <laughs> off the atst <laughs> so i have a video coming up in a few weeks where i'm You're finally going to show it i'm finally going to show you how to do it because it's incredibly simple but I think at the time I, I didn't have a very good camera and my setup wasn't particularly good for filming. So trying to film how I did, how I removed the head, which wasn't an easy option. So I've, yeah, for I everybody who wants missing that, from this are some stickers and the top. Yeah. You're missing the, the, the top hatch. You've got the, un, the under armor. Yeah. It's a top hatch with the, the, the gun on it. Uh, although I kind of like the, weathering that's happened with those uh on the front so you've done was as part of your restoration you did you recreate the top or did you have the piece i had the piece on, on that video that was a very old video i think i had everything i needed this i think seems I to be did... a difficult piece to find now yeah for... that and the top i think people make reproductions of the gun I've, I've yet to see anyone make the other parts but you could you could easily make something that would work now that i've got styrene sheet and plastic weld i think i could um i could handle that well i would love to see add that to the list of 50 years do. from I, now yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when did you start to notice with the channel that people would start sending in like hey i would love to see you tackle this or you started to get packages of things I, I, right from the start, people started asking me to to show fixes for stuff. In fact, uh, I think probably the first thing I did as a request was fix a $6 million man doll. Uh, I, I didn't collect them, but someone got in touch and said, how do you how do you fix this? Uh, and, you know, and it sounded interesting. So I, w I went on eBay and I bought a load of broken ones. And so that was done because someone requested it. And I said, as soon as I saw it, I, you know, I remember playing with Steve Austin as a child, but it wasn't my toy. I can't remember who had it, but obviously a friend had one and I played with it and thought it was good. And so when someone asked me to cover it, I thought, oh, actually, I quite like that. I'll get one and and work on it. So, you know, it was fairly soon after I started doing videos that people would get in touch and request things. And then, you know, as the channel's grown, people send me things. Certainly they they sort of see that I like broken toys and they'll, you know, they've either got something in the loft that's broken that they no longer want and will send it in. Or I have other people who 
you know, if they're out at car boot sales or places and see broken stuff, they just buy it and send it to me. It's like, <laughs> I, I saw this and thought you might like it. I, you know, I get boxes all the time of just, I thought you might like this. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and, and you talk about also being introduced to lines that you certainly didn't collect at the time. Yeah. Like a Real Ghostbusters was new to you. Yeah, Real you Ghostbusters. Those, right? that, that was that was Jeremy. He he got me into that. And I've now got quite a collection of those because he gave me a couple of them. And as I say, they sort of sat on the side for ages of me going, oh, I don't really know what to do. And then a sudden I, when I worked it out, I then started buying more of them because I was intrigued by them. And now I've got, yeah, I've got quite a collection of those. Mask is another one. I didn't, I wasn't really into Mask. I had, I think I had one figure that I'd bought many years ago that I just, you know, I just saw it and it was just in a box. And so it went in one of my boxes here. Um, and yes, yeah, so, so that, I sort of suddenly got into that and I was thinking, oh, actually that's quite interesting. But that's because people, someone sent me one. And I was like, oh, that's, yeah, I like that. I like that. So I've been buying more of them. Like I've now sort of bought quite a few and uh, I've got a few sort of projects that other people have sent me because that's what you find with toy collectors. If someone's into toys, they want other people to be into toys. And they'll, if you, you know, to get their enthusiasm about toys and so they'll give you things i do it all the time if someone comes around and it's like oh i like that it's like oh look here have one because i want <laughs> you to i want you to be as excited as i am about it um that's it, like gi joe i never really was into gi joe i had maybe two or three figures but the gi joe community i like as soon as i did one video on them they're like look well, i'm gonna like everybody's like well i'm gonna send you this i'm gonna send you this so <laughs> my gi joe collection just grew from nothing to like I've got loads of stuff because people keep saying because they're so enthusiastic about the toys that they love and they want me to be enthusiastic and I am because I as soon as you get them it's like oh these are brilliant I love them you know and I love well, Joe was a weird thing to travel because it was such an American centric show in yeah. the way it was constructed yeah we had the you know we had the action force which was the sort of the English version of it uh, which then sort of they merged the two together and I think I had like I had I had a Cobra of, officer or cobra you know figure and i had firefly and i also had um zartan that, but i don't remember where they came from they may have been ones my <laughs> mum picked up i think i remember buying the cobra figure in a, in a shop but the other two i have no idea where they came from and they, those were the only gi joe figures i had but i didn't know them as gi joe i i knew them as action force they just were with a few action force toys that i had um, now I realize there's a massive, you know, there's so many of them. It's, uh, you know, things I'd never even heard of. Well, I mean, it's, you know, talking about you know, like your Skeletor collection, it also, uh, you know, seems common that collectors will have a certain character that they fixate mm. on and want to get as many versions as possible. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is there anything besides Skeletor? That, I've got that, a, is that I've... for you? I've got a big Imperial army. So Imperial figures from Star Wars, the, the vintage figures. I've so what probably, people call troop building. Troop building, yeah. I, I, that was something I'd always loved the scene at the end of, you know, in Return of the Jedi where the Emperor arrives and there's just rows and rows of stormtroopers and, and Imperials. And as a kid, I think I had like, I had two biker scouts and a stormtrooper and that was it. And I was like, I, I'd always wanted to recreate that scene. What's well, hard to do as a kid. Because impossible, you're like, impossible should, I, should I get a character I don't have or yeah. another one of the ones that I already have? Exactly. So I about, I'm going to say probably 10 years ago, yeah, maybe more than 10, more before I started the channel, I started buying them because you could get them really cheap. Like Star, like Star Wars figures now, I class is quite expensive, but then you could pick them up. I was picking up things for sort of 50p, like a pound maybe. So <laughs> I just started buying imperial figures um and i sort of set myself a limit i'd never spend more than three pounds on a on an imperial figure it's the same rule i have with skeletor i never will spend more than three pounds so it's about five dollars i'd say on on a stormtrooper or on a skeletor and i still stick by that rule but if i see one i'll buy it and so <laughs> skeletors i'm up to about 45 i think something like that and my imperial army is Last time I counted was like sort of 220, 230 figures. Just so you, yeah. have you set them out yet to try and recreate that hangar scene? I had I, for a few years, they were on the shelf here, but I, I rotate my collection. And at the moment, my, my shelf here is full of action men. My so my action man 
uh, figures are all on display. I don't have a very big room. Uh, what you see here, it's about eight foot by eight foot with all of my filming stuff on one side and piles of boxes. So I don't have a lot of space to display. So my collection rotates. And at the moment, unfortunately, all of those are packed away. Although I'm still adding to it, I still get figures and they still go in the box with all the other ones. So <laughs> I, I, I haven't counted for a while, but there's there's probably, I would say probably about 250 Imperial figures in that, that army so far. And it's building and it's growing, you know, if i see something cheap i will buy it well when you talk about you know uh what we would call uh like flea markets and you know, like jumble sales or or swap meets or boot sales have you noticed as people have turned to ebay as a source finding it harder and harder to find things inexpensively because now everyone is assigning like well this you know i looked on ebay this is going for this before they go to the boot sale so they price oh, definitely them much higher uh, definitely but you can still i think there's still items out there to find and you can still find stuff cheaply but it's getting harder certainly ebay like people generally think if it's old it's worth a lot of money and that's not the case there are many things i collect that, that are worthless they're old toys but nobody's interested in them well, like star wars me. even the, even the the general public knows what star wars is yeah. it's not going to look like well, what's that figure yeah but you still find stuff. I still go to toy fairs and you still find cheap Star Wars figures. I mean, it, you can still buy figures for two or three pounds. They may be a bit worn and a bit beaten, but they're still there and they're still quite cheap. Um, you can still find rare Star Wars figures. I go into charity shops. Wherever I go, I'll, uh, there'll be a charity shop. I think you have them like sort of um, Goodwill and things like right. that in the States. So it will be people have donated stuff to them and they sell them on to make money for for the charity and you can still find incredible things in those shops and if, if it's something particularly incredible i will give them more money because I, I feel bad coming out with something that i know is worth a lot of money you know even though i don't i don't particularly value put values on my toys but if i know that they could have got more money i'll give them a little bit extra right. because it's sort of so what's been like me. your biggest find in one of those shops i found uh, a few years back, I found an Endor Luke Skywalker for 50p. Um, last week, I went to visit some friends and I found um, the Amigo Spider-Man's outfit for £1.50. <laughs> and it's really lovely condition. It's like a really lovely condition. Um, then a few weeks ago, I found a mask Condor. Uh, in a charity shop. They they were, had actually priced it up quite sensibly. They put £20 on it, which is a I would say at slightly at the high end of, of a of a price, but it's a good it was a good charity. So I bought it because I thought, well, you know, they're getting 20 pounds and I'm quite happy to have that. But yeah, you can find all sorts. Um I found a headmaster for a transformer, you know, the little heads. There were some transformers yeah. where the, I found the headmaster head in the bottom of a sort of a rummage bin in a charity shop, you know, where they put all the junky toys that kids can buy for 10p. And in the bottom of that was a headmaster head for 10p. It was missing one of its arms, but like 10p for that, blimey. Well, I remember um, getting that uh, that TIE fighter behind there and opening it up to to try and uh, clean it out uh, and finding uh, the uh, Jedi Luke's lightsaber. Right, yeah, that it happens. It. Yeah, it happens all the time. I bought a Rancor uh, a few years back. I think I paid nine pounds for a Rancor. So that's about... Fifteen dollars, something like that, and it rattled. And when I when I shook it, it had a, a Luke Stormtrooper blaster inside. It. <laughs> like it was like oh, so. But I think you just have to keep looking. That's what the, with toys and toy collect, vintage toy collect. Just keep looking. Don't expect to find something every time, but every once in a while, you'll go in a shop or you know or, or to a jumble sale or a car boot sale, or, and you'll find something. For an amazing price. Yeah. But, or, you know, I mean, what has been your biggest surprise in things you found stuck in something else? It's generally weapons, you know. I, of those, I yeah, mean, I had a Tessic, a, a squid head, and they sold it with the weapon in his hand. And when I got it home, he also had the weapon tucked in his belt behind the cape. <laughs> right. So, I think I found uh, someone, <laughs> a, a good sort of friend of the channel, who sends me quite a lot of, of bits, had bought an Action Man uh, space speeder 
that he'd seen in a charity shop and it was quite broken. He said he bought it because he thought it was a fun project. And he sent it over. And when I opened that up, tucked inside it was the a rubber action man spacesuit. And these things are incredibly hard to find because the rubber perishes and, and sort of disintegrates. And I took this thing out and sort of cleaned it up. And the, the suit is in an immaculate condition. But some child had just tucked it in there and it had been there for like 40 years. It's like just know, shielded how... from the sun, from the yeah. elements, just. And it's like, you know, I, I'd never I never expected to get an original one of these suits because they're so hard to find. They all, always sort of fall apart and because it's a sort of latex rubber, it just disintegrates. So, yeah, I have I have an original one of those. It's just hidden inside this. <laughs> toy. Have you I done the say, restoration yet on that? Vehicle? I did the restoration. I said to the guy who sent it to me, did you know it was there? He didn't. And I said, you know, do you want it? Because it's because it's quite a rare thing. And he, he happened to have one as well. So it's like, no, keep it. But it's like, how, how incredible is <laughs> that? And then someone else, I think I was given a, a some Mego clothes. Someone gave me some Mego clothes. And there, there was a pair of trousers in there that were particularly rare. Something like something like Superman's trousers. I can't remember who it was, but it was sort of Clark Kent's trousers. And um yeah, I did, but you know, he didn't want them. He wasn't interested. And someone gave me $150 for this <laughs> pair of trousers. It's like, <laughs> all right. So I, I, did, I did I did offer this guy money. I can't remember what happened, but I did say to him, look, I'll just send you the money because it seems so unfair that you sent me this stuff that you didn't know what it was. I didn't know what it was. And then someone's just gone, yeah, those are really rare. So yeah, you find odd things all the time. And you bought so many Skeletors with that. Yeah. Money. <laughs> No, I think I I can't remember what I did. I did offer I did offer him the money. I can't remember what what the outcome was. I I think I I generally if something like that happens, I, I'm not going to be sneaky about it. I will you know I'll say to people I'll be quite honest. Like you know yeah. this is just crazy. Like what you should check this. Yeah, <laughs> because it's just it just feels wrong to sort of I, I don't want to cheat people out of stuff. If they sent it to me, and it, it turns out to be something amazing, of course I'm going to say yeah. You know let's we'll, we'll sort something out for this because it just i'm not i'm not into it for for greed certainly well i mean anyone who watches your channel and goes to your website would know that you uh want to share with the community mm. uh that's one of the one of the pleasant surprises yes i like investigating to, your the stuff you've done there's too much negativity in toy collecting i find these days like every channel i go on there's someone moaning about something or and I, that's not what i want to do i want to toys this is my hobby and it's a fun hobby and I want to hopefully give some of that enthusiasm to other people. I don't want to be sort of, you know, moaning about, Oh, this is rubbish. That's rubbish. You know, if you don't like it, don't collect it, collect the stuff that makes you happy. Yeah. Yeah. And if you want to fix that thing, fix that thing for yeah. your collection. Yeah. Uh, well, let's go to your number three choice. My number three choice. Where did we go before? Oh, Stormtrooper. Well, I would say number three is an underloved figure. <laughs> which is reuse and it's i don't think many people like this figure it's odd it's weird you don't really see him in the movie at all you know he's such a sort of background character but i remember buying reuse uh, i used to have swimming lessons on a saturday and my dad it was my dad's job to drive me down to the swimming pool uh, and he'd sit and wait while i had the swimming lessons and then on the way home we would if I, you know, if I got some pocket money, there was a there was a, a supermarket there, which was on two floors. Downstairs was sort of, you know, food and stuff. And upstairs had sort of home goods and there was an aisle of toys. And so I'd head straight for that, up the escalators to the toy aisle. And I remember buying reuse from that toy sort of aisle. I don't know why I picked him because I didn't, you know, I don't remember him in the movies. You know, at the time, I didn't remember him in the movies. I just sort of saw him and just thought, I like that figure. And so it's just a nice memory that, you know, my dad taking me swimming and then stopping off to buy this very figure. So I've got a few of these. I even I tracked down a carded version, the same card that I remember buying it on. And it's just sort of special to me. He, you know, looking at him, he's such a weird figure. I don't know. I don't know why. <laughs> I mean, do you I find like that for do you tend to gravitate towards the aliens and creatures over human characters? For me, it's sort of stormtroopers and that anything in armor that just looks imposing. They're the ones I really go for. But I like, I like this one. I like Weequai as well from the Skiff in Return of the Jedi. I don't know. There's just as a child because I didn't have that many Star Wars figures. I didn't have many from you. Certainly, the ones that I bought myself. 
just became special to me and and i think this this is sort of that figure it, this is sort of encapsulates my memories of going swimming and then going to this supermarket and i can even remember the little sort of purse that i kept my money in was shaped like a sort of converse shoe it was a fabric uh, a yellow <laughs> fabric converse suit shoe with a zip on the bottom of it and that's where i put my my sort of pocket money and money that i'd managed to save during the week because star wars figures were the kind of thing you buy at school like the school shop yeah and a little, and it was, a little pocket change change purse yeah exactly and i just and so i'd have i'd have really struggled to get two pounds i think i got 50p a week pocket money so it'd be four weeks to save up for like that's, a figure. That's, that's a month figure yeah but i could get more money um we used to get the bus to school which was it was 10p on the way to school and 15p on the way back and so every day my mum gave That us, seems like uh, it's taking advantage of kids who just want to get home after a day at school. Yeah, but it was, <laughs> that's just that's just how it works in the UK. You know, you had to pay for the bus. It was but I could walk it. Uh, it would take me about 30 minutes to walk it. So on every you know every other day I'd walk one of those those ways because then I could keep you know it was better to walk home in the evening because you got 15p. In the morning it was 10p. So <laughs> At the end of school, I would walk home, so I would get fifteen p. <laughs> so it was sort of would supplement my my pocket money. But you were and doing so, the work. You were working. Yeah. You were. You were. And it meant that that extra thirty minute walk meant that by the time I got home, I would miss of some of the cartoons that would have been on TV, which was obviously you know that was the big part of childhood was getting home. Cartoons would start. Do you remember which four. one you consistently missed? On those days that you no, it would have been one of the, the lesser ones because they started with the rubbish ones at about four o'clock so it would have been one of the more rubbish cartoons i would have <laughs> i would have hoped i think the better ones like mysterious cities of gold and things like that were were you know they're, they're sort of their prime show so they would, they would they would put those on when they knew everyone was home but yeah so i would i would get my 50p pocket money and i would walk home from school as many days as i could to get more money <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that, that's why that is a, a just it's a it's those sort of childhood memories i remember getting the money to get to get that figure so I, did you find and uh, i know what you did a video recently on the transformer you found uh, yes yeah. while on a walk were there any other things that you found on those walks i remember i remember finding a few things some like bits of lego and a smurf and stuff like that but the transformer was by far the, the best thing i ever found because I was I was so into Transformers and I couldn't afford them. I couldn't afford to buy them because Transformers were much more expensive. Um, you know, even the, even the cheapest Transformer was just much more expensive. So that was, yeah, that was just, I don't know, that day was like, <laughs> oh, I've got a Transformer. <laughs> I'm jealous of that. Uh, I, I admit, I, what's great sometimes you'll do videos uh, or I'll see other uh, uh, people who, who put videos up where you go, oh, I kind of would like that thing that they featured. And the uh, that petrol station Smurf yeah. that you did, because uh, there's something just so uniquely Smurf about it. Yeah, and that's one. That's when I remember me and my brother had a sort of joint collection of Smurfs, and we had that one. I can't remember where it came from. But... And if no one's seen it, it comes with a gas pump. Yeah, it's a, it's a Smurf with a gas pump, and it's got national branding. National was a, I think it was a UK sort of petrol uh, company. I think that smurf is released elsewhere with different branding on it so it's a very specifically uk based smurf yeah i don't think we ever got that smurf in the us no and i just remember i remember having that smurf particularly and so i i don't you know i don't really want to get into collecting smurfs but there were a couple that i had strong memories <laughs> to um and we were my mum passed away a year ago we were cleaning out her house and she'd kept a few smurfs she'd kept uh like a gardener smurf and a king smurf and they just have in with all of her knickknacks were these smurfs and as soon as i saw them i was like oh yeah they're quite cool actually and it sort of reminded me of some other ones that i'd had and so i've just been buying up the odd little one that i really remember and that that one was key that one i bought another one there's a hockey smurf um that i bought as well recently just because i remembered having it um I don't know why this one particularly. I just remember having it because he's yellow, I suppose. All like all other Smurfs had a white hat, and this guy's yellow, so I had to get that as well, just to. Um, I mean, they're just, great little snapshots. They are, and they're cheap. If like, to collect, they're really cheap. They're you know they're 
they're a few pounds each and they're just nice figures they don't do anything you can't pose them but i just like they're, they're very sort of tactile in, in how they're put together and, and sort of designed so not, not a nice sort of little uh, you know it's not going to be i'm not going to hoard these i'm not going to go crazy <laughs> i'm just going to get the, that's the what everyone couple. says at the beginning I'm, <laughs> I know, but I'm, I, my plan is currently not and to do that. And suddenly, some some viewer sends you like a box full of Smurfs. That's I've I've been offered some and I've turned them down. I'm like, no, no, I'm I've got to put my foot down on this sort of stuff. I'm it's just it's wondering. not even going to be an offer. It's just going to show up in the PO box. It's just going to be <laughs> <laughs> here or a thousand Smurfs. Yes, it could well happen. Yeah, it's like the GI Joe again. It's that Smurf collectors turn out to be very generous and just excited about their collection so well yeah. and it seems like for you know restoration they're pretty straightforward that most of them are going to be a paint job or an accessory that came with them you know the most out there one would be like the spaceman one yeah that you did as far yeah. as requiring a bit more than that yeah i'm not sure what this the smurf collecting community is like whether they are against uh toys being restored it, you know some some toy communities don't care they just want they just like to see them and some are very picky i've not really sort of delved into the smurf world yet so uh the astro smurf seemed to go down well i didn't have I've not had any sort of bad comments about that so um <laughs> hopefully the smurf the you smurf haven't angered the smurf community yet yeah hopefully they're they're quite happy to see what i'm doing <laughs> but like if you had that hockey smurf and it didn't have the hockey stick with it. Is the hockey stick something that you could recreate? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Easily. Other it's materials. Just, yeah. It's it's fairly simple. It's just a sort of tube with a with a hockey puck stuck on the end of it. Yeah. You could easily make that. It it wouldn't be it wouldn't be too complicated. So yeah. But I bought one with it because it was they're so cheap. I mean. <laughs> well, that 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 petrol pump one that you bought doesn't seem to be too terribly cheap. I don't know. Maybe because I think that that's exclusive or I think yeah because that's a UK only sort of logos and stuff on it that probably makes it much more sought after than the rest but i think most smurfs you can get for a few pounds oh i love it. i get the snapshot in time of <laughs> jobs that have gone i have a uh one that i bought a few years ago just because it, it seemed like it would be it would not date well which was uh, uh well there's two of them one was a smurf at an old computer so it's got a crt <laughs> monitor Right, right. With him, and it was like business Smurf, or I forgot how they. Uh, and then the other one was the Smurf with a laptop. Right, right. But it was the boxiest <laughs> laptop you can imagine that he has. So yeah, I like I like Smurfs that capture weird moments in time that yeah. are immediately dated. It's it's. I think there's there's certainly something. I could I can see why people like them and why people buy so many of them. We actually went on holiday recently to Germany and I, I picked up a Smurf while we were there because I thought it, I was there. I saw them in the shop and it was a nice little reminder of a holiday trip. I wasn't I didn't want to buy anything else. So I bought and I, I bought a sleepy Smurf with a pillow because for some reason I was incredibly tired while I was there. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'll buy that because it's just a nice little sort of nod to the holiday and a nice little memory. So I, yeah, I you, can, you can basically Smurf. find a Smurf for any moment. I think so. Yeah, yeah. They must. They must have made thousands of them by now in in every shape or form, and yeah, doing everything. Oh, I mean, I bought an entire series that's just filmmaking Smurfs. So you right. have like a, a sound Smurf with a boom microphone. Oh. <laughs> you know, you got one with the clapper board. You got one in the director's chair. Yeah, uh, I think that they must. They at some point they must run out of ideas and just go. They've got a big list of like, oh, you would think that one there. Yeah. yeah, we haven't seen like pandemic Smurf with the mask on yet. Maybe there is. There probably there, is a pandemic probably is. Smurf. Yeah, if it, if they haven't done it yet, it's, it will be on the list to come soon. <laughs> uh, so what is your number two? We're getting out now, knowing that you had to rank these and you're having yeah. you know two to one. Before you put the number two, is your number one choice? pretty, my number, pretty my solid number, number one my number one choice has been the number one choice right okay. from the start because it was it's another of those childhood ones so okay um, it's it is my number one but my number two is we were talking about uh the 12 inch figures and the naivety of the ones that them just scaling up the small figure to be the big figure so my number two is chewbacca <laughs> because it's rubbish the, the, this version of chewbacca <laughs> is rubbish but I love the fact he is rubbish. <laughs> that there's, <laughs> it, it's such a. It doesn't look like Chewbacca. It's just awful. 
It looks but, like a, a, a basically a hirsute naked person. Yeah. And if you don't have it, like more often than not, not, you'll find him without the bandolier. So he's just a, a chocolate brown figure. <laughs> <laughs> and just wearing so, a fright mask. Yeah. I've never, I, I never had any of these as a kid. Um, as I said, so I, I, when I sort of started buying Star Wars figures, I wasn't interested in the 12-inch ones. And then a, a friend of mine sent me a photo of his desk because he was doing something. And in the background, he had this figure. And I said to him, oh, is that like a, you know, one of those um, gentle giant jumbo figures that they, you know, they'd re remade a load of figures, like, but slightly bigger a few years ago. And he goes, oh, no, it's a vintage, it's a, an original Chewbacca. And I was like, it's really, I was like, really? That's just rubbish. <laughs> He's like, yeah, no, that's what it, so I, um, I had to get myself one. And they're, again they're quite easy to find because without the bandolier no one seems to, no one seems to yeah, want that them. bandolier really does a lot of heavy lifting so i bought i think this is i'm just looking around i've got three of them now um none of them came with the bandolier so i just enjoyed having him and then a few years ago i i made some bandoliers for them from scratch um and it was a fun project so he's a useless figure but he's a fun project <laughs> so how did but you make the bandolier uh, the bandolier is is made out of I think it's just look at it. It's a bit of pleather, so sort of fake leather. And then I've made these little um, ammo packs out of styrene and sprayed them silver. And then the the bag is a bit of Lego and a bit of styrene, and they're sculpted uh, using milliput. So I've sculpted to make it look like the bag. So I've got a load of photos and reference of what the original bag should look like, and I've sculpted something to sort of make it look as close as I can to the original so it's all handmade and i'm sure if anyone saw it close up they'd go hmm, that's not original but, but I had until you said it i didn't know that wasn't the original no exactly there. i don't it's you you so rarely see the the, the bag and the, the bandolier that you know you've got to make something yourself and i don't think anyone makes reproductions of them I've, at least i've never seen one um so yeah i just made it myself and i'm i'm was sort of pleasantly pleased with how it came out so i've made three of the bandoliers now um to go with my other figures i've got another one down there and yeah i just i just think he's a rubbish figure but i really <laughs> i really like him because he's so rubbish so did so you do the bandolier project on the channel or was that something yeah you yeah for your... yeah I, no i've done it i've, I've covered it also you can you can get the pattern on toyploy.com for how i made all the pieces and i show the video shows exactly the process i go through to make it so i don't know if anyone that I, I always wonder does anyone actually copy what i do like some stuff I see people copy, copy, but things like this, where it's quite a complicated thing to make. I've, I've never seen anyone duplicate it. I'm sure they do, but they just, you know, haven't shown me. So <laughs> if anyone has made this, show me. Please I'd send love, photos in. Yeah, I'd love to see, you know, other people sort of, you know, what they've managed to make from this. So, um, yeah, he's a, I don't know, he's not an amazing figure, but that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean he's not an amazing figure. I do, I still... I really like it. I really like him as a figure. Yeah, something you but, love. Some things you just love because they're janky. Yeah, but he just looks like they've taken the small figure and gone. Whoop, that'll do. <laughs> there's, no, <laughs> there's no sort of. There's no. There's no trying to make it look more like Chewbacca. It's just yeah. But the stormtrooper is slightly different. Is, doesn't the stormtrooper's head articulate? No, it's not, the the stormtrooper's head on the twelve inch. No, it's so it's just the same in that locked position. It's exactly position. the same as the small figure. <laughs> Nothing works. He, you can move his arms up and down. You can move his legs back and forwards. The only thing they did was they added a piece of string on the side for his gun to sort of hold on to. So it's not even got a holster. It's just a piece of string. Yeah, the fact that it was just string that yeah, they... <laughs> it's not... That, that's what, to me, sort of makes these toys. The fact they're so basic. I think they didn't... There's no... <laughs> They've just gone, yeah, string, that'll do. And that, now, is the Vader the same? Shots. Is the Vader also scaled up? Or are they... No, the Vader... Vader's slightly better. Because he's slightly different, right? He has a... Because he has a nice cape. The cape is better. but And it's a little bit more detailed. The helmet certainly is much more detailed because the helmet is made in two parts. So the top section is is screwed on to the... Sort of, so it's much more detailed than the figure. Um, yeah, Hopefully it has a stronger neck. Yes, I think I've never seen a broken. I've never seen a broken head on a Vader. I've broken the arms are always missing, and likewise on Chewbacca, the arms are always fallen off. That's just and the again. lightsaber's gone. Which I know the you did a video 
on recreating that lightsaber. Yeah, yeah, that was just a simple, you know, it's a fairly simple shape and you can, as long as it looks like a, roughly like a lightsaber, yeah. <laughs> it, it's, it will do the job. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, definitely I would describe the things you do as shelf perfect. Yeah, because I've got, I've watched, there are a few other channels that do toy restoration and other channels that do restorations in general. And they, they do stuff so perfectly, I think it puts... 99% of people off having a go because you see it and just think I can never do that that's I'm never going to get anywhere near it or they use tools that cost a lot of money or they've got equipment that there's no way an yeah, we're, we're putting person... this into the sonic chamber yeah exactly <laughs> yeah even but even down to I'm now going to 3d print these pieces I just think like most people don't have don't have a, a resin printer no <laughs> sitting or, like, in the house. You know, or you know I'm going to get my airbrush out and do this it's like yeah, most people don't have that. So a big part of what I do is I want to show people you can do a lot with very little. And it doesn't the end result doesn't need to be perfect. It's just got to be perfect for you that you're happy with it. And I, this, this idea of mint items and that, you know, everything's got to be perfect. It doesn't exist. There's no such thing as a perfect toy. There's no, there never will be because they're mass produced. And just do it so that you're happy with it and and you can enjoy it. And that's the most important thing. If you've had fun fixing a toy, that's all you need to have. You know, it's all you need to do. One of the most uh, uh, informative and depressing videos on your channel is the toy entropy right. video where you detail yeah. that none of these are forever. No, I think that's, that's, like it's when when you see people buying toys as an investment, buying these vintage toys as an investment, or getting them uh, graded. You know, you you buy a box Star Wars vehicle and grade it in a plastic case. Inside that box, that toy could have fallen apart because you've never looked at it, and it's just you know, if it's like most stuff, plastic just degrades. It will break. It will fall apart. None of these toys are were designed to last more than a few years. The fact that they're still here forty years later is a miracle. Um, and but you you, a, talk, you but you show some of those things that are touch brittle, like yeah. some of the GI Joe stuff and yeah, there are there are toys that I then <laughs> I've got a few toys here I've got um I collect Micronauts and Micro Man they're little plastic figures but they make some metal ones of them I can't actually see one now but the metal ones I've got two of them I don't touch them because they are so delicate you you touch the arm and it will just snap off and there's nothing you can do to repair it because it's made out of very cheap die cast metal so just enjoy it as it is <laughs> because it's not going to be here it's not going to be here for long none of this stuff is going to be here for long and i also don't think you know at the moment there's a lot of money in collecting toys because as everybody our age has sort of reached a point in their lives where they've got spare cash but give it another 20 years lots of us are going to be dying off and no one's going to be interested the market's in this stuff. going to be flooded yeah, no one's going to be interested in this stuff because there'll be there'll be a few younger people who want to collect it, but most people won't care. All of this stuff, like all antiques, the they, the interest in them comes and goes. So just enjoy them for what they are now, and yeah, don't they they will fail, they will break. That's just what's going to happen. Yeah, you, 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 yeah. Suddenly something falls off a shelf, or yeah. you can never guarantee what's going to happen. No, you know, I've, I've broken a few toys recently just like but essentially by looking at them. You're just like, oh, good. and it's sort of <laughs> the, in the moment you're like, oh, oh, no. But it's like, well, I'll fix it up. I'll repair it because, you know, it can be repaired. It's never going to be perfect again, but it doesn't matter. It's still there. I've still got it. I can still enjoy it. So it's still it, shelf perfect. Exactly. It will, it will look good on my display. I'll just remember, be very careful with it next time. <laughs> What have you found to be the most sort of brittle and delicate toys that have not aged well? Anything that uh, uses what the, what people call gold plastic, or ba it's basically any plastic that has a sort of swirly uh, metallic finish to it. So um, transformers suffer with it a lot, gold plastic syndrome. There are certain transformers that are made with this plastic and it is just brittle. You touch it and it shatters. Um, Battle Armor He-Man, his chest is made of the same stuff. So you see so many of those. You can just crush them. It just falls apart. Um, 
so that that's a real problem for like for transformers collectors especially there are some transformers don't touch them don't do anything <laughs> they just you know but they even made there are some modern toys that they've made using that same method and they are just as brittle they made some transformers uh a millennium falcon transformer that turned into chewbacca and han solo the chewbacca part of that I've seen so many of those shattered because they, they used a sort of brown metallic sort of bronzy plastic for Chewbacca's sort of flesh parts and that. And it's just, it just breaks. There's nothing you can do to stop it. It just breaks. So is there a company that had better or worse? Because I've seen you talk about sort of the vintage G.I. Joe vehicles as being yeah. super, super crumbly. So yeah, some, some are worse than others, certainly. Um, there are some things I don't like touching, certainly that you just think, oh, yeah, I know. Transformers definitely is, is on that list. Um, just trying to think what else I've... Because they also did... So that would have been Hasbro, because Hasbro yeah. would have been doing those brittle <laughs> those brittle G.I. Joe vehicles too. But they, they're still doing it. I've been I've, I've actually done a few tweets in the last few days, tweeting to Hasbro because of these new Dungeons & Dragons figures they've done. I've seen so many people opening those up and the hands break off or the head breaks off because they've used... It's either they, they've over-designed it and then, and then used cheap plastic or, you know, a combination of that. And you just think, that's just awful. How could you release toys like that into the marketplace that are not fit to be a toy? It's not... It's not fit to, to go. Yes, they're they're pre-broken. Yeah. And I bought, um, I can't remember which one it was. I, I bought a Millennium Falcon from The Force Awakens. So that's another Hasbro product. And they were quite expensive uh, things. And I bought it and it just didn't work. It had a it had a sort of button on it where it was supposed to flip up a gun. And the gun just would never lock in place. It's like this this toy was on sale for 120 pounds. I, I didn't pay 120 pounds. I bought it for, you know, <laughs> when it was on offer. But it's like, so you were happy to send out a toy that some child would buy for 120 pounds and it doesn't work out of the box. That infuriates me, that sort of thing. Well, and that could be, as you know, as you've talked about, it could be a design issue. It could be, what, what was the, I think you did a mask toy recently where from the factory it had a slight imperfection. Oh, yeah. The, I did the, the, um, I think the it was the mask switch blade. I think that, that prevented one, it from operating. Oh, that one! No, smoothly. yeah, that, yeah, that was one of the, yeah. That I think was just sort of factory errors. It just never looked like it had been finished properly. So it was cheap manufacturing, and yeah, uh, the only way to pull the rear fin out was to sort of bite it because it was it required <laughs> so much, work. and you could you could see children's bite marks on this toy because obviously someone had got got it, given it, and they've been uh, you know biting it to get it. Over. But take it apart, little bit of sanding and filing, and it's fixed. I think, like with the the so there's QC and, issues, quality control. Yeah, I think with the Dungeons and Dragons figures I've been seeing, um, they've over engineered them like, to give them loads of articulation, and then use cheap plastic on very key point parts of it. And but I think that's a common problem: over engineering stuff. They they've sort of they're making a toy. But they're also making a sort of a collectible maquette for for adults, um, and they go down that collectible route too much, making it really poseable. Whereas actually, what they really need to do is make it a toy first, so that it's strong and playable with, and people will like it. Then you can actually play with. It. If it's a toy that you can't play with, that's not a toy. It's it's a shelf, you know, something to go on the shelf. Right, it's a, it's a collectible. Um, yeah, so. If it's a collectible, sell it as a collectible and then people will know. But if it's a toy, make it a toy. Make it a toy that can be thrown around. You know, Star Wars figures, you can chuck them about. They can go in the pond. They can go in the bath. You can <laughs> bury them. And at the end, you've still got a figure with five points of articulation that you can play with. It doesn't break. More but also, I mean, the figure prices are a premium now. So stuff yes. like those Dungeons and Dragons figures that are being sold, you know, 25 to 30 bucks a pop, you know, you would think they would invest. If you're going to articulate, make a collectible like that, then maybe make sure that the plastic yeah, I think will it's, hold it's, up. I find it a bit infuriating that, that's the, it, that they're still doing, they still do toys like this. They sell them as toys. I know they're aimed at adults, but they're, they are toys. They're marketed as toys. And they just 
cut corners maybe i, th I think it's an, a sort of over engineering really they try and do too much and actually what they should do is less but better and it would be it would make a you know do less i don't want all this articulation just make it a good toy but what's the most modern figure that you've done a fix for uh what have i done recently someone sent me i don't buy that many toys I've, I've done a few star wars ones i did a fix on that millennium falcon because it was like i took it apart and i could see what was wrong with it it was just poor quality plastic so i fixed that someone sent me um is it Diamond Select made made some Cylons from the modern Battlestar Galactica, and they bought three of them, and every single one they'd open had broken. <laughs> like, and those are those are sort of I'm going to say they're sort of adult collectible toys. They're not, but you should still be able to open something from a packet and pose it without a bit falling off it. But this was just again over engineered to make it look as close to the the tv show as possible whereas what they should have done is simplified it a bit and made something that was close enough but strong right um, so i had to fix that and and lego was the answer lego fixed it because lego's quality plastic and you can do stuff with it they'd use cheap plastic in two thin pieces and it was just too weak i mean the only time that lego has failed was also using that brown plastic that you're talking about hasn't was yes. that a, a big thing about those brown legos yeah. in fact i used to i was fixing something the other day and i mistakenly bought out a brown lego lance and it snapped on me while i was fixing and i and it was at that point i remembered oh yeah don't use the brown ones and i swapped it out for a black <laughs> one and it was fine so yeah they do they have had their issues over the years but i think in general they used quite good quality stuff and um, i'm sure if they saw what i was doing to it they'd be horrified <laughs> or maybe they'd be appreciative of the fact a that... new market a new market in yeah. the yeah, lego sales <laughs> you need to reach out to lego and have them sponsor yeah i have and i've never had a response <laughs> i've never had a response in fact i've been tweeting at hasbro as well saying send me all your broken dungeons and dragons figures because i'd happily have a go at fixing them i've yet to have a response have you had any of your your viewers reach out who have purchased those figures and had them broken? Uh, I've had a few people. I, I get mentioned a lot on Twitter. People saying, "I'll oh, send them to, to Toy Ploy. He'll fix them." So uh, at some point, I would imagine I will see some. I'm not buying them because I uh, I can see they're awful uh, in how they've been designed. So I, it's not something I would buy. But I imagine someone will send me one at some point as a here you go. So again, anyone watching who's sitting <laughs> on a, a set of broken. Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> figures that just came out, the animated ones. Go ahead and uh Yeah. Fill my inbox with them. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm sure it's, I prefer I prefer fixing old toys. I think old toys are generally built better and designed as toys first and not collectibles. And I think that makes them that's why they're better. They're just designed to be played with and you know, stronger bonds, stronger mechanisms. Just generally it's a toy first. Durability. They're designed yeah. for durability, playability. Yeah, not uh, uh, not lo not to look look great. No, exactly, exactly. As you saw, as you can see from that stormtrooper and that Chewbacca. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's not quality there certainly, but that's why. <laughs> but that's why I like them because they just there's a naivety to those sort of toys, and they didn't have to look exactly right because they were close enough, and close and, enough and is then, all and, a kid cares about. And then yet you'd have things slip through, like the you know the prevalence of vinyl capes, mm. which were good. That's a kid. How is a kid not going to tear that? Yeah, yeah. But I guess it was a cheap option. They were thinking fabric capes probably cost twice as much. We got to churn these out quickly. With a vinyl cape, you just got to stamp it out. It's done. <laughs> It'll do. The figure will survive. The cape will get lost or damaged. The weapons will get lost and damaged, but the figure will carry on. Well, no, you did before they did their uh, their recent release of what sort of like a Vader 2.0 in Kenner would have looked like. Uh, you did one mm. for your channel, uh, giving it like a cloth cape and upgrading it. What do you think of what uh, the Kenner's version of upgrading looked like for the retro? I, I sort of... I. I didn't buy them. I didn't think, I think a, a lot of the this stuff they've been making doesn't look vintage. There's something about it. I think there's, it's the same as like Super 7 figures. You know, Super 7 do all of their vintage, you know, style figures. But to me, they don't look vintage. There's something wrong with their 
design aesthetics that doesn't make them look vintage. And I thought that was with the Vader. He he's all right, but I didn't. It just didn't look right to me. Doesn't in my quite eyes. feel what Kenner would have done no, if you had taken a time machine back, had their yeah. designers. I think I think, and that's that's why it didn't do it for me. I bought I bought the other retro figures, the ones that are just reissues of of Star Wars figures, and I looked at those and I just yeah, it just I don't know, it didn't do it for me, and so that's why I ended up doing my version because I thought actually what Kenner would have done is they wouldn't have made a new figure because they're lazy and and it costs money. <laughs> What they would have done is just gone, let's stick a different cape on it or give him a slightly different paint scheme. And a cape is a, an easy thing to do. And you can see the progression in capes on Kenner figures that, yeah, early ones are vinyl. And then they get to Empire Strikes Back and you get a little bit of vinyl and a little bit of fabric. And by the time you've got the Jedi, it's all fabric capes. And so if they were going to reissue him around the Jedi era, they'd have just gone, right, give him a fabric cape, easy to do. And... Because at the same time they were producing the superpowers figures, the Ken of superpowers figures of Batman and whatever, they got a different method of attaching capes to those. So I could quite easily see them going right. Well, we we'll use clip this. Color. We use this method on that figure, and we can make a new figure that will sell again. So that was my take on it, rather than redesign him. Completely. Although I don't know if that Vader neck would have handled a clip collar for long. If it does just... if you reinforce it with Lego. <laughs> But if they had used their same mold at the time, that thing would have been popping it's off. Not, it's not too bad. It's, I, I, it's that one. I think the one I've stuck it on is just a normal Vader. It seems to it seems to hold on because he's got to, quite a strange neck. He's got quite a long neck anyway, so there's quite a lot of space there for uh, to put the clip around. On. Yeah, but but yeah, I think the the retro sort of wave of figures that they're doing, they're nice, but they just don't have the aesthetic. They're too good. I think is possibly where i'm going they put too much detail in them there's too much sculpting and that you wouldn't have got back in the day and if you're trying to do a See, i think quite the opposite in in what what seems weird when they introduce what would have been because if you look at the jedi figures kenner was really getting more detailed they it weren't was... they, they weren't the simplistic face sculpts of what you saw in the original 12. but they still had they still had simplistic paint applications. And I think that's maybe where I'm going, that the, the modern paint applications are very good and very fine. Whereas actually Star Wars figures have very basic paint applications, you know, simple eyes, no mouths, you know, it's very simple stuff. So it may be a combination for me of that. The sculpts are too good. The paint is too fine. So it's like. just uncanny. Yeah. No just, how you look at it. For me, I've, I've not, I've not bought any of them. I've also, I don't watch uh, modern Star Wars, <laughs> which may, <laughs> I, I watched the, I watched the prequel trilogy and was like, oh, not really, didn't really enjoy it. I watched the new trilogy of Star Wars films and really didn't enjoy it. And I've not watched any Star Wars since. And I get loads of people saying to me, oh, you've got to watch The Mandalorian. You've got to watch, but I'm like, no, I'm done. Star Wars for me <laughs> is three movies and they're the three movies. And, I, and everything that they've done since then has has sort of not ruined my memory of those Star Wars films, but it doesn't make them any better. I like those films, and that's where I'm stuck. But so, you never know. You never know. You might turn on one day, get bored. No, I anything might do, could happen. I might do, but I've like I've been I've sort of been bitten by about before. I didn't watch the. Um, you do have a battle blade. droid behind you. We should note that. I do. That is a gift from a friend. <laughs> episode one is episode one is my one sort of weakness. I quite like episode one. It's awful, but I quite like it. And it's the last set of toys I thought were really good because they they kept with the old five points of articulation, and every figure is essentially with their arms straight and their legs straight. And I thought that was a that was they were good modern figures because they were sort of had an old aesthetic. And then after that, the Star Wars figures, like when they got to episode two, everyone's posed like this. Yeah, the posing or is got weird. Mag, or got magnetic heads so things fall off. So I thought episode one was the last good set of Star Wars. Although I toys. will say that there's a sweet period right after those weird Attack of the Clones ones you're describing, where everything was superposed and and just bizarre. Uh where I think they did go with the simple articulation, but hmm. really good sculpting. They are they are better, 
But the amount of those figures I see without hands or without heads or because of the way they're, de they're designed, they're, they're always missing limbs or missing parts. And so that's the point for me. That's not a toy. You've got too many fiddly bits that get lost on it. A toy, like episode one figures, they're just proper figures. They come with, you know, guns and that, which, okay, they get lost. But the figures right. themselves which are sturdy. Yeah. They're sturdy figures. Right. Yeah. No, they're, they're probably the last golden age of just... Yeah, I think so. I think it's, and after that, it got too complicated and too fancy. And so, but the movies, yeah, three movies. There were only three Star Wars movies. <laughs> three movies and that battle droid. No. Yeah, that battle droid. <laughs> that battle, and I do also have some fins from the pod racer, so actual fins off a pod racer downstairs. So uh, I, you know, I do have an affinity with. Have you fixed one. any of the vehicles from that episode one line? No, I haven't. I don't. My my collection of that is all boxed up. I haven't looked at them in many years. They're probably some broken toys in my collection just because of entropy. They may have fallen because that's sort of like the you know they, they certainly don't make any more uh, the amount of vehicles that they did no. in the past. The episode one stuff I bought. I got. I think I've got all the vehicles. I've even got the Naboo starship. You know the big. Uh, oh yeah, that thing is massive because it's. It's a nice, actually, that's a really nice toy. It's a nice toy and a playset all in one. So I think they made some good stuff for that. I thought the, the, with the a vehicles... lot of fiddly bits in it that can easily break. And, and yeah, yeah. Mine's still in its box. I did open it and played with it for a bit and it was, it was hung on uh, in a previous house. It was hung on the wall. And it's got, uh, it, it just... suffers from like, I have, I got one that I need to, uh, it's one of the panels is warped. Right. Yeah. So I haven't quite figured out how to get that realigned. To where I'll, have to have a, I'll have to have a look at mine see what it's like it's still in a box in the loft because i know you know that for safety's sake oh, the pointy bits were made out of quite bendy rubber plastic so i'm imagining a lot of those are sort of bent yes. and, and sort of bowed yeah, like the years. little engine ones are basically yeah. uh, uh a bit saggy and i think that the paint does not respond well to heat oh right oh, because bet... the one i got i think was stored it was second hand and there's some running Right. Of it, where you can see mm. that it, it may be heated up to the point where, because it's a, it's a nice shiny silver it's paint on it. it. Yeah. It's a nice ship. Yeah. I like episode one because I really like it. I like the tank as well. That's sort of the, the droid tank is quite a nice Which thing. Which has a it. nice automated mechanism, doesn't it? That actually deploys the droids out of it, a battery. Oh, no. Operated. I mean, I mean, the little tank, the little sort of tank. I can't remember what it's called. No, it's the one you get like a. Battle droids sitting in the top with binoculars. Oh, in the on. turret. Okay. Yeah. Yes. That's that's quite. I never got that big thing. The that's, transport. Yeah, I never managed to get that. I think that's I, that's sort of something I probably would quite like if I had it. But I, space is such a premium here. I, I, <laughs> well, you can have the battle droid behind you holding it in its arms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so having it hold the various episode one yeah, vehicles you that know. you have. Well, it's it's a battle droid with other battle. There's other battle droids sitting on its legs. It's got it's got. I've got a twelve inch battle droid, and then the smaller ones. I like battle droids. I don't know why. I just I think they're quite cool. It's sort of the best bit of episode one was those, even though they're more useless than stormtroopers. They're army buildable. Yeah, this is, and a sleek design. Uh, yeah. I noticed you have. So, do you generally mount and hang your ships just for space yeah. issues? Yeah, I've got this room, as I say, is, is very small. So uh, the area I film in uh, is, is quite tiny. So, but above it is all of my ships are hanging up. Um, and yeah, everything is sort of up on the wall. Um, I wish I had a bigger room. At some point, maybe I'll move to a place that like, I can have a, a nice room and it, it sort of display everything. And finally, but, that Naboo starship will be. Yeah, it will be back glory. out. It will be back out. Yeah. Would you hang that from the, from the wall yeah, or from used... the ceiling? Yeah, in a in a previous house, it was hung on the wall, so I had a bit more space in that previous house. So it was it was hung up along with along with the pod racers and stuff like that. I had them all sort of all on display. Well, at some point, maybe do a video on how you mount starships to the wall because I've been looking at ways to where it feels I, you know safe. I have a very old video, uh, which must be about eight or nine years old, of showing how I hang the ships on the wall. So you can check that out. It's, oh yeah, it's, I, have to, I, I have still to... I still hang them exactly the same way. Nothing has changed in all that time. And, <laughs> Some of the things I hung up in that video are exactly where they were eight years later. So nothing like, has like moved. my X-wing is fishing line, but yeah, uh, it's, 
that's right fishing line and, and picture hooks it's all it don't, you don't need much but just a few runs of fishing line it's um but there's always a, a worry about where you're threading it through and where the delicate bits yeah. are and where the balance points are and but most things seem to survive. Nothing, nothing has moved. The heaviest one to hang is the Millennium Falcon, which I don't you can't see it, but it's, it's up there. That has been fine, and that's the heaviest thing I've got hung on the wall. It, it, it doesn't move. So, well, I have to go find the video because yes, yeah. I'm obviously also uh, running out of usable space. Vehicles yeah. are not a fun thing to display. They're no, so that's big. Why, there's there's a lot of toy lines that I don't collect the vehicles for. I just collect the figures because the vehicles, if I collected those, it would be, you know, I'm already overloaded. So or play sets. Are you saying you're not going to get that firehouse for your real Ghostbusters collection? I'm not going to get that. I've already got I've already got Snake Mountain there and uh, Fortress of Fangs there and Castle Grey Skull. I mean, it's just. <laughs> I've got oh, the you're, saying it's, you're saying Eternia is not going in the, no, in the loft? No, no, I would have loved that, but no, that's, uh, yeah, that's not <laughs> that. That would have taken up all the room that's left in this place. So you said your number one choice was going to be your number one the whole time. Yeah. So what is your number one choice? It's another, I'm going to say, possibly less less popular figure, but it is the Hoth Rebel Commander. It, it's, a, it's a sort of unremarkable figure. But I remember getting this figure. In fact, I got a carded version because I remembered getting a carded version. This, I went to a birthday party. So I must have been, what year did this come out? Well, it would be 1980, wasn't it? So I would have been, I would have been six years, maybe seven years old. And at that time, uh, I was, you know, so I would have been at primary school, junior school, primary, yeah, junior, junior school, or something. no, primary school. And some child in my classroom i can remember her name but i won't give out the name because it i don't know if she knows you know this story but we <laughs> so most of the class would have been invited to her birthday party and at the end of a party you would get given a sort of goodie bag of you know it would be a bit of cake and something to take home and in my bag was the hoth rebel commander like on a card and like everybody, everybody got given Star Wars figures. I can't. I think I don't know if it was the boys got Star Wars figures and the girls got something else. I can't remember, but I got this figure, and I remember being sort of absolutely blown that's away. A, that's that a I, heck of a, a party gift. Yeah, at that I time, it's like it's like I've got a start. You know, going home with a Star Wars figure. So this this was the figure. best party ever. Yeah, and <laughs> so that it, it's just that strong a memory that I remember getting this figure. So when I sort of got back into collecting it was one of the first ones i got again and then i don't really collect carded figures although i've got quite a few behind me i don't they're just ones that i happen to have found cheap over the years but he was one i tracked down um and i tracked down an empire card because it was the empire version of him that i got um so i i sort of spent time finding the right one just so I had, just so I had it. I've got, I've, I've got Jedi versions as well, but the Jedi version is not the right version. I remembered <laughs> it said Empire Strikes Back on the box, so it's like, yeah, I had to have it. So he's not an amazing. I don't think he's an amazing figure because he's got a strange moustache. He's got this annoying bit of fabric that gets in the way, so he can't turn his head properly. He can't hold his gun properly because it's got that stupid strap on it. But <laughs> it's a, it's a, a figure that has so many memories to me. I remember, I remember, sort of remember getting him. That he is my sort of all-time favorite Star Wars figure. Now, is that one you've gotten since, or is that your original childhood? The, the original one I got was gone. I don't know where it went. It got sold off. So, uh, yeah, this is just one I've added, sort of in time. But um, it was the carded version I had to get for that. As soon as I sort of, you know, knew I could find the card again, it's like I have to have that carded version because it was the card really more than anything. That sort of brings back the memory to me, the carded version of the Rebel Commander. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably one of the more unique number one choices that I've had yeah, on the I show think... so far. But I love that it is well, tied think... ex explicitly to an emotional memory from childhood. Yeah, but I think that's what collecting is all about. You, you, the reason we all collect is for uh, memories. I think you know, it's not, it's nothing yeah. more than that you know i want i like reliving my childhood in this room or reliving the things that i never had that i wanted um and that is such a strong memory for me getting that figure that you know he's the best one he's, he's you know by no means he is the best star wars figure but for me he is 
the best Star Wars figure. It's, so when did you it, re, when did you get your like when you when you're back into your I'm going to start getting these things back that I got rid of. Uh, how soon did you get that figure? Oh, it would have been quite early on because because it's an easy figure to get as well. It's not like it's a hard. It's not a rare <laughs> figure. It's not. It's not that you know you can still pick them up for next to nothing. Um, so I would have got him fairly quickly. The carded version, I've probably only got sort of ten years ago, maybe something like that. But just because I wasn't really into carded figures, but it's a good know. thing you got it ten years ago because if you tried to find that now as a carded version, regardless of the figure, the price is probably significantly more than you paid at the time. I think I paid. I've got three of. I've got two Jedi versions and I've got an Empire version. I think the Jedi versions cost me maybe twenty pounds each, uh, <laughs> and I think. That Empire card is one I paid forty pounds for, which I thought was too much at the time, but I want I really wanted it, and it seemed like well, I'll just you know. I'll I would say you'd be lucky to find either of those for a couple hundred pounds at this point. Yeah, I think certainly I've got some other figures on my shelf that are, like carded ones that I paid nothing for, and I know like the sort <laughs> of the silly money they go for. Yeah, um, certainly since the pandemic, also when yeah. people were sort of sitting home and looking on eBay when they had a lot more disposable got income a, from not going out to eat or going I've on got, vacations i think one of i've got a solid head r2d2 on an empire card so before that before they did the sensor scope version of him so it's an early release empire card i think that's probably the most expensive one i've got and i can't remember what i paid for it but like not a lot it was not even um, <laughs> um it's graded as well someone graded it and i didn't pay a lot for it graded but so yeah, I don't. It's um, I'm sure that's yeah. probably worth worth hundreds now. But, yeah, the, the market is as far as collectibles is not fun. It's just if when if you're in it like me, just for I would like to have these things. It'd be nice. I don't need mint. I don't need just to find things is nearly like the parts market. Like I've, I've you yeah. Know, if I went to try even just to find that. Oh yeah, yeah. That's probably uh fifty bucks. Yeah. Just for that piece to try and find it. Yeah, it's certainly it's certainly got uh, like collecting has got more expensive if you're if you have no patience. That's what I always say to people, like, be patient. Don't be one of these people who, who are like, I need it now sort of attitude. If you're not, I need it now, collector. That's it. Your money's gone. You're you're going to be penniless quickly. <laughs> if you're patient, you can find this stuff and it will it will turn up, but it might take 10 years. It might take 20 years. You will find it. And it'll just be serendipity. You know, yeah, I'll say that, I'm... you know, shout out to my uh, local comic shop, uh, Memory Lane Comics, uh, Wellington. Highly recommend them. But I was there and, you know, I had gotten vehicles from them run by really great folks down there. And I had mentioned that uh, the X-Wing that I repaired using your repair method, I didn't have a canopy for it. And he's like, oh, well, I have miscellaneous parts because we get stuff in all the time. Let me see what I have. And not only did he have a cannon, he had one of the missing uh, uh, guns that I was missing from the wings as well. So I was able to complete those parts because of the spares that they had and very kindly was like, no, no, here, just just yeah. take it, you know. But that's, that's, that's how it works. You know, I've got boxes of spare parts and that that I keep for projects. But if someone comes around and they're like, oh, have you got this for this? It's like, if I've got it and I don't need it, take it because... It's better that someone else has then completed their their collection with a with a part. If it's just sitting here in a box, I can't even remember it's in a box. What good is it? It's not. A, it's a, <laughs> of no good. But like and, you, talking, and you would hope that people will do the same. Yeah, but people do. That's the thing. You know, I fix toys and I'll say I haven't got this, and someone will go, I've got one, and it, oh, brilliant. Okay, and, and we'll do a swap. You know, I'll send them some toy ploy sort of merch or something back as a as a thank you, and in comes the little piece that I need to finish. A project that i'm working on it's it's how the toy world works or at least how i hope it works that there are people out there generously sort of helping others fix their toys and finish collections it's i think in, in general the toy world is a nice lot of people there are some people who are just greedy and for money and that but well, that's think, in every world yeah it's not you know it's if you can help other collectors that's important that's the thing to do help other collectors and and yeah you know the world carries on because someone will help you at some future point you know it's it's how it goes around but with collecting patience i say to everybody just be patient 
and like it took me 20 years to complete my star wars collection i still don't have all the weapons but i've got all the figures now because what was the last a, one you got uh, the last one i got was a blue snag or two but the the which i never thought i'd get so that was a that was a pie in the sky thing but someone very kindly sent me one of those but i needed yak face and when i first started collecting you could get yak face for 30 pounds something like that and i was at the time i was spending like two or three pounds on a star wars figure so 30 pounds i'm like no nah, i'm not spending that it's... <laughs> and then my collection grew and yak face was then like 70 pounds and i'm like no <laughs> now i'm definitely not buying that and it sort of it, the price of him just kept going up and up. And like in, in the end, I was just like, no, well, I'm I'm never going to get it. It doesn't bother, it doesn't matter. It's, it's never a figure I had or was it that interested in. Then I went to a toy fair and I bought him for one pound fifty. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just like, oh, all right, brilliant. And so, but that took me so from the start of my collection to finishing it was about twenty years. But that's the I fun mean, of it, you know. One pound got, fifty is remarkable. I mean, but that's... now I've, now I've got them all. What have I got to collect? That's why I've got other things. You know, that's that collection is done. I'm sort of like, oh, it's there. I, it's it's nice to have, but it's sort of done. I like if you have a figure missing, you've still got a goal. Now, for their accessories, when you talk about weapons missing and such, do you recreate them yourself? Do you keep looking for them? Are you fine with repros? Because I know you've done videos on reproductions. As I, well. I'm I'm fine with repros. I think I would say fifty percent of my figures. Because you're have... about the display, not about yeah. authenticating. No, I've, you I know 50... where 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 the mold release is on yeah. a specific. I think fifty percent <laughs> of my figures will have reproduction of weapons. The rest are original. There's some that's still missing. I just don't have weapons for them. I've never bothered to sort of find them. Capes, you know, some have got original capes. Some have got handmade capes because I can't find the capes. It doesn't, as long as the whole collection, when I look at it, it's like, oh, that's nice. The fact that it's not quite original, I'm, you know, most people look at it, it wouldn't know that it's not, you know, they look at it and go, oh, it's a nice collection. I'm not going to sell it. So it doesn't matter. It's, it's for my personal enjoyment. So have you do uh, have just a cloth cape vinyl uh, 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 Jawa, or have you done a vinyl cape Jawa customized? I have a vinyl. I have a customized vinyl cape Jawa. I can grab him. There you go. Custom. So uh, yeah, it's just a cape I made on a normal Jawa, just just because I thought it would be fun to make it. Um, you know, I don't. The vinyl cape Jawa means nothing to me. I don't remember them. I don't. It, it's it's one of those things collectors go crazy for and spend huge amounts of yeah, money just it's just rick, rick, it, rick springfield is the only one i think who has a vinyl cape java uh jawa on a uh, on a card yeah it's and he must have spent a fortune on it they're, they're sort of crazy money. so yeah i've got that's a you know non-original one i think is that pattern uh, on uh, the website yeah of course yeah because it's um <laughs> other people want to do other people want to do it other people would like that even just to have it to display so yeah there's a pattern there but like my um my pop-up lightsaber r2d2 the the figure is original but the lightsaber is a reproduction i don't think it's even a particularly good reproduction it's just a cheap <laughs> one but it looks fine it just you know it does the job yeah how often are you taking the lightsaber out of the pop-up exactly R2. i don't I very rarely pick the figures up. You know, I'll pick them once a year. I'll give them a good clean and a dust. But otherwise, they just they're looking nice. I like looking at them and going, "Oh yeah, that's nice. It's my collection." But I so don't... outside of the stormtroopers, which character do you have the most duplicates of? Uh, In various for... states of disrepair. Probably Boba Fett. I've got quite a few of those, just because he's such a common figure. Uh, you you know you find him all the time, and I quite like him as a figure. So um, he. I sort of tend to keep them. I've got a lot. I'm um, as well as my stormtrooper army. I've been sort of building a Hoth rebel army <laughs> but again because they're so common. <laughs> and so my uh, my troop transport, which is on the wall here, every time I get a Hoth figure, I put it in there. Uh, I don't know how many is in there, but there's a lot of them slowly but building but it's not up. Full yet? No, there's still space. So you can fit a lot of figures in that, though. It's very heavy. I know that because I took it down the other day and it's like, oh, this is heavy. <laughs> um, <laughs> so there's a lot in there. So I'm, I've, I've got a lot of like Hoth rebel commanders and soldiers and, and Han Hoth as well. For some reason, Han in his Hoth outfit is the, a very common figure. I get so many of them in like missing legs or missing arms. And every once in a while, I'll boil and pop a few together and make another 
Hoth Han, and he goes in the, the transport. And how many snow troopers do you have? Oh, 20 or 30. I, yeah, a lot of them, yeah. But not a single one has an original skirt. I don't have a single original <laughs> uh, skirt for them. I'm, I've had to make every single one. I've never seen an original skirt. And you've done a skirt video, right? Yeah, but I've never seen an original one. I've never had one in my collection. <laughs> I just... So if... When people say I've got reproductions in my, you know, in in my collection, it's like you know, I've never seen an original. I've got thirty of these figures, so I've had to make thirty skirts because I've not seen one. <laughs> well, I was uh, I greatly enjoyed what you did the uh, in the Imperial Guard recently, right? The Emperor's Guard, the oh, yeah. creation of uh, that was another fun video. Yeah, again, you see, because you see so many. I guess kids get that figure and think the cape is annoying. <laughs> Just <laughs> pull it off. So well, you see loads well, of them. Listen, I, you you triggered memories of me when uh, you're doing the Ghostbusters video, and I was one of the kids that clipped off that Neutrona <laughs> wand because yeah. it was annoying. You can't yeah. display it like that. That's not how no. they walk around. I think that's why most of them are missing. I'm sure. I think why I Kenner video, just wouldn't like, have made that just... as like a thing you could have pushed through and fed yeah, in and taken out just it's just boggles. irritating every t every time i get that figure out and that thing sticking out the front, that's just annoying as a child yeah bosh that would have been off yeah you know <laughs> i even had the the strong heart figure from dungeons and dragons let me just grab one i had this as a kid i love i love this figure but that tuft of, of whatever it's supposed to be on his head i hate it so i just cut it off <laughs> So he just had a sort of helmet on then. I, I much prefer the figure. So my childhood one, yeah, I just got a pair of scissors and cut it off. It's, yeah, I mean, if it's if it's not I right, think, yeah, the, you gotta you gotta make it right. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure I'm sure other other people would have done similar to toys. If if it just annoys you, it's not doing something. Just yeah, you just modify <laughs> it and that's it. It's gone. So you mentioned you had an honorable mention. What is your your honorable mention that didn't my quite honorable make mention? Is another 12 inch one and it's old space buns herself princess leia because i had great fun uh working out how to redo these hair pieces the space buns uh so again it's not a figure i had as a child but uh when i got one of these and had to sort of restore it and learning how to tie hair and make these buns i just thoroughly enjoyed it so it's a figure i i sort of look fondly at because you know it's a girl i suppose it's you know it's star wars is an answer of a girl's toy back in back in those days but i just enjoy i just enjoyed fixing it it's actually got a pretty good carrie fisher like this it's, it's very good the, i think it's one of the better what sort of likenesses of the the uh the, the human characters from Star Wars. it really does look like her so yeah that's that's my honorable mention just because i have so how fun. difficult was it to to do the hair it's a real pain for someone who's never played with dolls before and never worked out how to do doll hair. So it, it, it took a lot of messing around and um, yeah, trial and error to get it to work. But can you I imagine how they would have done it in the factory? I think how I've done it here is how they've done it in the factory, but they would have had. Uh, but do you think it was an automated or do you think that? Yeah, they... I think it, I think it was automated. It would have been sort of sucked and the thing put on and then wrapped round and bands put on using a machine it would have been very easy to do with a machine um but it's but your average hard, kid who, who who let those buns go loose probably <laughs> yeah that's why that's why you see so many of, with the hair down i think once you've got the hair done and, and taken apart you're never going to get it back together <laughs> it, it's it's a, something for an adult to do and an adult with a lot of time on their hands and a steady hand. I, how, I, I, your yeah. painting is also remarkable. That's where you lose me on things that I'm capable of, is when I it's, see your steady hand. Uh, it's practice and uh, painting. Like I, I like and, you doing Kenner eyes, and I'm like, I yuck. can't, I can't. When I fixed eyes as a kid, it was with a ballpoint pen, and that's yeah, that was frightening. It's Kenner eyes are hard. Yeah, they're hard to do, and doing that sort of stuff with a camera in a way because i film with a camera in front of me like that so i'm i'm working around the camera <laughs> and it's I've, I've learned how to do it over it's still much easier to do without a camera there you can you can do things quite quickly with yeah. a camera. i, I like when you do the jump catch where you're like i'll be back in a second <laughs> yeah because there are some things that's just impossible to 
to do with things in front of you and I'm like I've my eyesight is fairly terrible as well so I, I have to get things quite close to sort of make sure that I can see what I'm doing so with the camera there I'm sort of looking at the camera display as well trying to <laughs> so practice with that and a steady hand is a yeah you do need a steady hand it's it's not always easy certainly well I've I found your repaints on the Kenner stuff to be remarkable and for me irreproducible <laughs> I'm going to say practice, just a lot of practice. <laughs> a lot of pins on a yeah. lot of end of brushes. Yeah, but, uh, but a lot of a lot of off-screen swearing and going, oh. Well, and, I got and, that down pat. That yeah. that part I, I nailed. So I'm good to go on the off-screen swearing when it comes to getting them sorted. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I, I certainly, again, want to recommend to everyone, your channel is invaluable as a resource and is also just fun to watch. You know, if you if you enjoy craft videos, anyone with a skill set doing doing uh, uh, fixes and repairs, it's fun to watch. If you have no interest in toys but just like to see people fixing stuff, it's fun to watch. But for uh, again, as a resource for the community and just you know, someone who had a broken X wing who just wanted to fix that, just so it could click into place and look like an X wing, it was uh, invaluable to find your videos so well, that's uh, good I'm, I'm glad they've been of use that's the whole point of it is to help other people with their collections and i get a lot of people messaging me saying they've got no interest in toys but they just like seeing someone enjoying a hobby and fixing things yeah they're just... i think there's a there's a lot of enjoyment to be had from just watching something go from rubbish to nice <laughs> they're very zen they're very yeah. zen videos if anyone uh and everyone should check them out and also i want to make sure that i mention you have this is something that's Largely unknown in the U.S., but I know is uh, uh, very well known in the U.K. as far as a tradition uh, of the annual yes. coming out, as, it, uh, it's, as it's people been a, often get for gifts, uh, kids' it's, uh, gifts. It's been out, and it's sold out, would you believe? So there are no more copies at the moment. I'm hoping well, that Congratulations. They, thanks. I'm hoping that the publisher will do a second run of it. I'm I'm currently in talks with them about doing another annual for, for next year. Well, so. that's what, you know, I want to make sure I mentioned for next year as well. Yeah. So, well, I can, I can show you, I can show you a copy of this year's one, but unfortunately there so are So how no would you copies. describe an annual? An annual, it, it is a very British thing, because I said that, and, and Americans don't get it. If I say book, they'll understand, but an annual was something that you would get at Christmas, um, and it would be it's sort of 120 pages about a topic. So there'd be annuals for TV shows. So we'd have them for like Starsky and Hutch or Space 1999. Or, or Doctor Star, Who. Or... or Doctor Who or Star. And it would be a, a sort of, there'd be stories in it. There'd be puzzles. There'd be articles about the actors. Uh, you know, it's just a, 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 a book aimed at kids. And so what my annual is, is 120 pages of um stuff about toys and what i do on the channel so there's lots of sort of bits about that's he-man stuff and there's some behind the scenes stuff of, of you know how i make the videos and it's just a general sort of i guess you could call it a coffee table book for grown-ups but it's it's done in the style of what people in the uk would have got as a as a christmas it's gift. a companion it's a, piece it's the sort of thing a, a nan or a gran would buy for you if they didn't know you know they I know, know I know he likes you. Doctor Who, so he'll love he, this. Yeah, get, and they were only like at the time they were only you know a couple of pounds you could get an annual. And I used to have loads of them, and I'd love I would love reading them. I've still got a big collection here of vintage annuals that I grew up with, and so yeah, that's what this is. It's an annual for people who like old toys, <laughs> and it's also sort of a placeholder for the year. Like it's a summation of like. Well, here's what happened throughout the year in the show. If this is an ongoing yeah, show, it's, it's well, I write for I write for a magazine each month anyway. There's a ma magazine called Fusion, uh, which is sort of a retro computer and techie uh, magazine. It comes out once a month, and I write a piece for them every month. So some of the articles from that have gone into here, and then there's a whole load of new stuff that is specifically for this. That is too too sort of toy ploy related to go in a general magazine but i still write from them for them every month i've written this month's article which is i can't remember what it's about now but I've, I've written this month's article and i will write the one next month so people can read my stuff every month anyway but this is a sort of dedicated toy Boys, when i saw the announcement uh being an anglophile i knew what you what meant by annual so i was like that sounds like a lot of fun for 
for what you do and for a channel to have an annual. Yeah, it's I, it's not something I'd expect us to do, but the the yeah the people I write for said, "Do you want to write a book? You know, an annual?" And I was like, "Yeah, let's do it." You know, it's, <laughs> what, what can go wrong? Nothing really. So yeah, it's sold out. Um, so currently there are no copies available. Well, congratulations. Um, hopefully they will do a second print run, or maybe when the next annual comes out, there'll be some way that you can get this one as well. So there'll be sort of um, yeah, a way to get the first well, one. Maybe because... people can write into you and say that they would love to be put on a, a wait list. So you, yeah. maybe you can tell the publisher, look, this is how many people are waiting for this. Well, if you go to uh, Fusion Retro Books website, which I think is fusionretrobooks.com, mail them and say, where is it? Can I get it? Because they're, they're the publishers. <laughs> and if, the more people who write to them, the more chance there is of there being a, a, a second print run and a second annual. Well, folks should do that. I love the idea of it. And congratulations on it. Thank you. Uh, so where should people find you? Where, where, well, besides the channel, obviously. YouTube, YouTube is the main place. Um, that's where I, I post a few times a week. I have a second YouTube channel now called, called Toy Poloid 2. So if you want more toy stuff, go there. Um, and then I'm on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. I'm a bit on Facebook. I don't do a huge amount on Facebook. And I am on TikTok as well for some strange reason. Um, <laughs> well, if you're doing shorts anyway, yeah. you might as well just spread them around. So, yeah, you can find you can find me anywhere, really. I, I post all sorts of stuff. But I would say YouTube and Instagram are probably the main places that I'll post uh, what I'm working on. And if you really want to support me, I have a Patreon page as well. And uh, you get early access to all my videos on there. So, uh, you know, sign up there. I know I, I never like to sort of ask people to sign up because it seems like begging. But if you want to support me, Patreon's great. And it gives me some money to sort of help pay for future projects. And certainly if you want to send stuff your way, I know you have information on your website for the P.O. box. Uh, yeah, people, I, I don't generally give out my address. I, I try and filter what people send me. So you have to get in touch with me to get my address. Because I think if I, <laughs> if I put my address out there in the, in the wild world, uh, I would be swamped. So I, tr I do have to, I have a filter on what people send me because, uh, yeah, my, my room is small. And it's already overloaded with stuff. So I, if I turn people down, I'm not being rude. I literally have Listen, there's, no there's space. There's a person right now that has 4,000 Skeletors they want to send you. <laughs> well, yeah, those I'd accept. <laughs> <laughs> those you'd make room for. I, I'd always find space for a Skeletor. <laughs> just just stay in, hanging from the ceiling, right? Like a starry Skeletor yeah. night. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> well, I hope everyone does all those things. Uh, last question. As far as a toy that you've never seen, is there any toy that you'd love that they wish you would wish that they had made or vehicle for that matter? I'm going to say uh, the the sort of tank things in Tron or the big flying things in Tron. I think Tron is a terrible movie with great aesthetics. I like the light cycles. <laughs> I like they needed more figures. There was too few figures. I think some of the, the tanks or the bigger vehicles like that as a toy, I'd have I'd have loved that. And they never, as far as I'm aware, they never made anything. Uh, to, no, I to think the most they did was the light cycle, right? Yeah, I've got I do have, I've got a light cycle here. I've got I've got one light cycle and one figure. That's all I've ever been able to find. But uh, I would have loved more for that. I think it's a. Now I'm think, curious if anyone is out there has done customs. Of the there's tank. a guy. There's a guy on Instagram who does uh, custom figures, which look really nice. I keep meaning to sort of say to him. Can I buy a few off you? Because he does sculpt, he sort of casts them in, in different colors with different graphics. They look fantastic. And then I keep, yeah, I need to message him and buy a few off him because I think, <laughs> I just think they look fantastic. But yeah, a big, some bigger vehicles from that, I think would have been, you know, amazing. Well, someone fulfill Dave's wish <laughs> of the Tron tank. Yeah. Uh, and and I want to, again, thank you for being on the show. And I want to thank everyone for watching. Uh, I guess you like and subscribe on the video. I guess that's what people say to do. If you want to do that, that's fine. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to support me, I have a Patreon as well. Patreon.com slash Ken Bloom. It's a whole bunch of stuff on there. You get access to all the audio exclusives at the $1 level. Everything on there. There's There's interviews and and uh, many podcasts and panels with wonderful guests that I've done. Uh, that's all on there. I have a book that's out, The Art of DuckTales. You can still purchase bit.ly slash DuckTales book and some art prints, bit.ly slash duck art. That also acts as a book print 
uh, for a book plate. There we go. For your book, which you can also get and all those things. Uh, and last thing I'll mention is a gift I got in the mail today. Star Wars related. Uh, shout out to Molly and Ben for sending me the Star Wars Return of the Jedi Oral B Dental Health Adventure <laughs> Book. So if you uh, buy your Star Wars Return of the Jedi toothbrushes, this is the adventure book full of fun and games on your uh, journey towards uh, dental health. So if you if you ever want to see a Jedi take on plaque, then by <laughs> all means, find yourself a copy of the uh, dental health. Oh, look. Yoda does not like you drinking that soda pop. He is very unhappy with you. <laughs> so this was uh, a level. Uh, please uh, customize your 12 inch <laughs> Chewbacca with a giant carrot. Oh my God. I, I think, yeah. I'm going to put that on the list as well. <laughs> if you, if you, if you, if you don't have a bandolier, you can always customize it with a carrot. So, uh, what a weird use, just throwing Drewby McCool on an apple. It's very strange. But I guess if you're going to use a lightsaber to pick your teeth, there could be worse things. <laughs> <laughs> but it does have, I'll leave everyone with this, the smiling face of Chewbacca. <laughs> the happiest Wookiee you ever did see. And you know what? how he got that smile? Dental health. <laughs> and a big carrot. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Uh, bye.